Okay, y'all, we back at it. Um, I'm back with my brother. Me and my man got some legendary interviews out there. Um, and we just continuing on with the legacy. I love sitting down with this brother because his perspective on the world, not just the world of hip hop, but his perspective on the world is always so on point. Um, please welcome my man, Ray Benzino. Ray, what up, kid? Hey, listen, man, I only got one title from a song that 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 explains you, Prez. Nate Dog. Nobody does it better. Woo! <laughs> I love it. You're doing your thing. I man. love it. Proud I love when man. we get a chance to sit down and dialogue like this, kid. Um, I'm looking forward. It's a lot going on in the world, and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on it. Man, listen, Prez. Like I said, man, we like we got a real good chemistry, man. Let's just keep it going for 2023, because man, it's getting weirder and weirder out here. <laughs> oh my goodness, kid! Like, <laughs> let's go. I'm ready. I don't know what's happening. Yo, you want let's let's start because because we could start off in a bad place because we didn't we don't took some losses in in the world of hip hop in the, in the last couple of weeks. But let's start off in a good place. The Grammys. Grammys just passed. You get a chance to watch them. You know what, Prez? Listen. The reason why, why we started the Source Awards because of the, of just the 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 disappointment and disgust over how the Grammy treat treat Grammys treat, treats our culture. Um, that was the thank thanks to the Grammys, the Source Awards was made because, you know, the, you gotta understand the Grammys are a bunch of older white people who know nothing about the hip hop culture. People want people have to understand that. Hip hop is more than the music, it's the culture. If you understand the culture, then you understand the music better. And the, the, the people that run the Grammys and that are on the board of the Grammys that select music, they're just, they're out of touch with our culture, mm -hmm. okay? Just like I would be out of touch with their culture. And that's not a bad thing. That doesn't mean that we, we should hate each other. That doesn't mean that we're, we should be divided. It just means that we should learn and tolerate each more about each other. And that's all racist. And I, and I feel like the Grammys, the people with the Grammys just never did that with hip hop. Okay. Um, and I second that, you know, they, they have been out of touch. So many um, artists have been very vocal about it for years. I, I, I believe, you know, in years past, you've had Drake. I mean, all, all kinds of people, they, they, they just boycotted the Grammys all together, like, yo, what's the point of me even showing up? Y'all never get it right. Um, but that tribute performance, it felt like they got that right. That was a, that was a big performance. What'd you think about it? I didn't see it. I just don't, I, I, I don't tune into the Grammys. I just, I just don't. Oh, so you, you, know, you one of them that don't, you, you just completely boycott. Yeah, because what's, I mean, you don't boycott nothing if you're still tuning in. Whether you if if you don't go to it but you're still watching it on TV, then you really are you really aren't boycotting it. And, and and you know maybe they're trying to get it right, and maybe I'll, I'll probably go back. I'm sure I will and go look at it just for the you know for the sake of hip hop. But you know what? It's like, and this is why it's hard for me to to, to look at top fives and top tens. Billboard just released their top ten. It's just. You know, every interview I do, people always ask me, what's your top five, Dad? What's your, you just, it's, it, to me, it's a disrespect to the culture and the music when, and to artists because you, how can you do a top 10 of something that's been 50 years old? Mm. How, how, how is that possible? And, 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 you know, tributes are good, but I think tributes are more better when, especially with as, as rich as, and, and successful as the Grammys are, then, you know, more of a tribute would be putting more money in, into the communities of, of the people in hip hop. That to me is a real tribute. Um, there's a lot of artists that don't get recognized who really was an integral part of this culture. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a disservice to always talk top 10, number one and number two. Everybody has had a significant, well, anybody with a significant amount of catalog has had hits. And then people have had songs that were just, you know, good songs that didn't resonate to the culture. That doesn't mean there was bad songs, but certain songs are hits. A lot of people had hits. Every time you, you, 
you you put somebody at a number one or a number two or a number five, then all the other ones are automatically going to get upset with you anyways. So you, let, let's you know let's just think about that for a minute and always stop trying to look for number ones and and always trying to stop and, 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 and always trying to compete. We should just all be happy that based on what we go through out here as a culture and people that we have hip hop to put money in our pockets to feed our to feed our families. I mean, honestly, like I just that's another thing, not just the Grammys, but the whole top five and top 10. You know, this is not what hip hop should be going into at 50. It should be more unified and more of an understanding and, and, and to understand that, man, where would we be without hip hop? And where would we be without everything that comes with it? So, you know, I me, I'm, this is just my personal vent, you know, and it's crazy that you did start it with that. And we try to start it positively, but with me, there's not too much I, I can relate positivity with when it comes to the Grammys. Okay, I got to challenge you on one part of this. Yes. In every industry, right? Like it don't matter what it is. It's always going to be a ranking. I don't care what it is. Like you, you, it, it could be phones. You, you're going to have iPhone. You're going to have Samsung. You're going to have everybody else. It could be baseball, it could be basketball. Everybody is placing somebody on a top 10, top 20, top 50 list. Why should hip hop be an exception to that rule? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm as big of a hip hop fan as you are. And as much as I want us all to be kumbaya, it's to keep it 100, like, like somebody gotta have that number one slot. It's, it's hard to put people how, how do you rank? I, I don't agree. 10, I, don't, I, I don't agree. R rank is, really? is the army. Rank is when you need somebody to answer to or bow down to. You know, that's when rank works. You don't need rank and when it, because rank, it, it's not about a rank. And that makes it worse, President, if you're thinking like that. And, and if, if you think that number one, then that ranks him the best. Why? Why? Because he's the best. No, but how is he the best based on what? On sales, based on based on him having the platinum and the next man guy having the platinum? What makes it the best? The only thing that makes it the best is your individual opinion of it. Like, there's 8 to 10 billion people on Earth, and I'm sure there's probably a couple billion listening to hip-hop that all have their own piece of work. When you make music, you're making a piece of work that people connect with one way or the other. Some, some connect with songs more seriously. Some connect with songs more than they connect with the artists. A lot of times you hear songs and you love it, and then you go meet the artist and you be like, Jesus Christ, man, this guy's really an <laughs> asshole. No, it's, it's just the truth. And, and no, I, yo, Ray, I done met, I done met wild brothers. Trust me, I done met wild artists and I felt the same way. You just struck a chord with me, but go ahead. There's, only, there's a saying, there's a saying that you, you don't want to meet your icons. You know what I'm saying? Oh Stay God. away. Because you yeah. meet them and they don't live up in your mind to what you thought they was in their songs. All I'm saying is that, all I'm saying is that, again, hip hop came about, God sent hip hop to the earth, the most high, Yahweh, Allah, I mean, whoever, Jehovah, whoever you want to call them, sent hip hop down to our culture when we needed it the most. And, you know, I was there since day one. So when I'm listening to Spoonie G and I'm listening to Grandmaster Flash and, and I'm listening to, uh, you know, uh, Shaw Rock, you know what I'm saying? Funky Four Plus One. I'm listening, you know, to, to the people who that started this thing that yeah. never get mentioned. Yeah. And there's so many more, there's so many more that it's a disgrace, it's a, it's a disservice for me to even really speak because I can't mention all of them. Then you move up another generation of, of artists. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Prez, it's just, I don't believe in rank because nobody, as far as I'm concerned, ranks above me, but God. If you start believing in ranks with rappers, then, then you're gonna kill what the essence of hip hop and what the most high gave us hip hop for in the first place. We get too bogged in and, and I think, we never, we wasn't like that for a while. For some reason, we're just, we, we, we're letting outside, the outsiders 
Vargas into this top five, top 10, just top, 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 top. Nah, man, it's not like that, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody gives you a piece of their work and some of the work touched many people. That doesn't, you know, and so if you got a thousand artists that you've listened to over the last 40 years, nobody can be number one. You know, you just have to put it in perspective. I think that we grow up on thinking that there always has to be number ones. They just don't. Yo, you want to know what's crazy? Um, I know you didn't watch the Grammys, but you are on social media. Snoop, he reposted somebody this week. And, and it, yo, I, he caught me so off guard. He was like, he'd been nominated 24 times for Grammys. It has not won one. Yeah, and all Snoop right. Well, been doing this for damn near 30 years. Because the Grammys don't associate with real niggas. You could understand that. You know, they if if you're whitewashed, you have a chance. And not all, you know, lately, like they're trying to throw in specs of them to make it look like something. They can't fool me. But come on, man. Snoop represents what hip hop is. He came from nothing and he's something now. And he done also got into the to their culture, you know, into the white culture that 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 being some being himself being from the street is okay. So now, you know, you got white girls all around the world screaming, Snoop Dogg, yeah. They screaming, we're okay. You know, no, the guys that come from the slums out. and never change up. You know, you can get mature, you get more knowledgeable, but you don't have to switch up who you are coming from what you came from. There's a way to keep your dignity. And that's, you know, you know that that's a great example. 24 times, it's a disrespect. Shout, shout out to Snoop, le the, the the legend from the streets. Yo, it's so crazy. It, I mean, Snoop was dog pound. Um, first album, insane. Part of that whole West Coast movement that that just took over the world. This guy is to keep it a hundred. He's one of the most recognizable faces on planet Earth. I don't care if he go to any country and and let's not and let's not forget and he doesn't get mentioned in top you know Snoop lyrically his vocal tone is one of a kind yep one one of a kind nobody will ever sound like Snoop nobody even tries to sound it's only one Snoop dog his cadence the way he flows he the way he raps you know and that's what I'm saying man it's, you know the the whole, it can never be a number one. Too many, too many guys out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, I agree 100% what you said, man. Uh, Snoop, one of the most recognizable voices, not just faces on planet Earth, but voices. It's a travesty that this man does not have one Grammy to his name, especially considering all of those massive albums he's done or either been on and just to keep it 100%, that whole West Coast wave that was going on in the mid 90s, he was at the he was at the uh, the forefront of it. Crazy. And let's not forget if it wasn't for him to kind of interject himself, things would have went crazy at the Source Awards that year when Shook said what he said and the bad boy and Death Row thing yep. was going. It, it, it would have been chaos. So I always give him the credit for diffusing that situation and um, not only allowing to the wards to go on, but the, at that point, nobody else had got had gotten hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because of that whole West Coast beef thing. And I think, you know, anytime you can save lives or prevent lives from being lost, it's always a great thing. Absolutely. You know, I'm sure you heard that um, Quavo, he did a um, memorial to, to take off at the Grammys, but, you know, they got video showing that him and Offset got into it backstage. Did you hear about that? I mean, first, you know, RIP to take off. And I'm glad I want to talk about this because I haven't been able to share my thoughts. It's, it's an emotional, it's an emotional situation because I look at, you got these young guys that come from around the Athens, Georgia area, came from nothing again. One of the biggest groups, probably since the Beatles, you know. Real talk. Okay. Um, a family of guys 
who all grew up together. And you know, being down south myself, I, I do see how when you grow up in a small little country town, how you know you 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 do have better morals. I mean, these guys, for for the most part, from what I've understood and from how I kind of look, because I'm I'm kind of a very I'm kind of inquisitive where I could just see a person and how they act and how and where they came from. You could tell that they came from humble beginnings and being in a small town, they they had morals. You know, in small towns down south, you know, church, a lot of church down here, Prez, you know what I'm saying? And you could just see like these guys wasn't gangsters, these guys wasn't, you know, ignorant. They wasn't, you know, they these were some good guys who enjoyed hip hop and rapped and came up with a style of their own and and man had some hits also and still probably would have as a three i'm sure quavo and, and offset will have hits to come because they're very talented but what's happened to them is just i mean it couldn't be more disappointed as far as again disappointed of our culture man you know what i'm saying to, for, for these young guys to be so great so talented to help their family come up out of nothing and then, you know, uh, take off dead, Quavo and Offset of Beef. And like, this is what, and, and a major reason of this is because there's nobody older really guiding them. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the stuff that they, I'm sure, grew up with, I'm sure is different with, when it comes to this hip hop thing. You know, this, this hip hop business is a, Man, it's 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 you know it's a dangerous business right now. Yeah, yeah. When you know when money gets involved and you got all these guys around you that you know if you don't if you don't keep your circle close of 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 the guys who you grew up with or at least have some history with, and you just let a bunch of guys who you don't know and just because you're thinking that this is going to be a protection, well, that could be just as dangerous as the people who they're protecting you from, anyways. Because it's always going to be about money. It's always going to be about money. And, you know, I know Jay Prince. You know, Prince Jay, Jay signed me. Jay signed me uh, when, when in 96, 97. I met Jay Prince at, at Jack the Rapper. And at this time, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we was a group. The group was called Almighty RSO. And, you know, Back then, being in Boston, we was heavy Ghetto Boys fans, heavy Rap-A-Lot fans, because we was kind of like a, a street gangster rap group. But since we was, since we're two hours from New York, you know, everything is New York at that time. And we love New York hip hop, but we just was exposed to NWA, Ghetto Boys, because we're in Boston and we only could listen to college radio. So we, we're listening to more of a broader playlist. We're just not listening to the East Coast stuff. So I grew up like, once the, you know, even West Coast wise in the early years, Ice T, you know, back in the Grandmaster Flash day, Ice T was rapping on the movies Breaking, and that was early in the game. But he was from the West Coast, so it's, you know, I I just always had a my my listening was always everywhere. And at that point, we made a song that we got dropped off the label. Tom Silverman, we see him and and uh, we made a song called One of the Chamber, and was talking about police brutality. Tom Silverman, Tommy Boy had signed us to a single deal. He was getting ready to shoot the video, then he dropped us because he was under pressure from the police because the police were saying we was inciting violence because of one of the chamber. The song was about particularly two kids that lost their lives in Boston and the police had gotten, you know, they got over. You know, the stuff that's happening now with these police was happening way back then in Boston. It just was nobody ever said anything about it. Absolutely. But, but um, Tom dropped us and didn't call us or nothing. We found out through the newspaper and um, that the Boston police were suing us, a bunch of bullshit. Anyways, he dropped us. We seen him at Jack the Rapper. And we're deep as fuck at Jack the Rapper. We had the Marriott, remember? That they used to hold, the Jack the Rappers used to be at the Marriott. Of course. The Marriott, the Marriott Marquis, the one in Times Square. Yep, yep. And rappers from all over the country would come there. It was a huge conference. It was crazy. So we see Tom coming down the escalator. Tom sees us. His first reaction, this is no lie, was to start walking back up the escalator while it was coming down. I could tell he was nervous. Um, Tom comes down, man, we approach him. At the same time, Tom comes, here comes little Jay down the hallway. 
with a bunch of niggas. So it's us, it's Lil J, everybody's deep. Tom's scared as hell, but he sees Jay walk over. Jay, this is Jay Prince. He was like, Ray, listen, this is Jay Prince. You know, that, listen, you know, I'm under pressure. I can't play this type of um, hip hop, you know, but he can. He's, you know, and at that point, it was like, oh shit, I'm getting ready to meet Lil J. So I almost forgot about Tom for a second. Tom weaseled his way up <laughs> out of there. You know what I'm saying? But I, I did, you know, me and Jay, man, you know, and, and Jay to me was, man, like he was the guy. Because the Ghetto Boys, Scarface, Rest in Peace, Bushwick, man, Willie D, those are all my friends. And, you know, I ended up moving to Texas for a year when he signed us. And we lived in Houston. And, you know, uh, shit, man, it was like, to me, it was like living a dream because we love gangster rap so much that we, at that point, other than N.W.A., Jay Princeton were, were the guys. You know, yeah. so I know Jay. And... One thing I can tell you about Jay, like Jay, Jay's not gonna, like you're not, you never heard nothing about Jay in other people's business back then. You know what I'm saying? Like Jay, Jay, Jay Prince kept it, you know, whatever his business was with rap a lot was his business, okay? And, you know, I remember, you know what I'm saying, meeting Jazz when Jazz was real young, you know, because Jay's, Jay stayed on, looked like he had his own township or something. I mean, Jay, you know what I'm saying, was really doing big things back then that a lot of black men wasn't doing. And I just never known for him, you know, other than if you fuck with him or his, I never known for him just to be running around bullying shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, fast forward to, you know, the whole mob tie situation. I mean, you know, Young black men need guidance. And I don't think Jay gets the credit enough for what he's done in Houston. I think the whole checking in thing has, you know, and, and I'm looking at social media and, I, and, and, you know, though I kind of feel bad for what he's going through with social media, but that's, that's what social media does. And I know that's not bothering Jay because Jay's not a social media guy. You may see him doing interviews now, but before you hardly, you, you would hardly see Jay. So, um, this situation's unfortunate. And it's it's hard for me to speak on these type of situations because it's still an ongoing investigation. I can only speak from the people that I know. And I've met Jay, we've always been one. He signed us, gave us a, a chance when nobody did. You know what I'm saying? I'll always be grateful for that. And, you know, with, with the situation, a life was lost. You know, a, a very influential, and you could just tell, Takeoff was the only one that was, when I had the crab trap open, he was the only one that would come to the crab trap. Humble as hell. He would buy yeah, food. very humble. He loved our food. And, and you know, my son, Ray Ray, uh, him and Ray, were, you know, it was cool. He came down just, man, I just, and then when I see pictures of him when he was little, you could just tell he was a, a really, really good guy, man. And, you know, I, 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 I never met him because every time he came twice to the crab trap, you know, so I, and, and I, I was never there, but, um, I was never there when he came, but, you know, I haven't met those guys, Quavo, and, you know, I'm just a fan of the music, you know what I'm saying, and how they carry themselves. I think the situation could have been, again, that's another situation with the only thing I want to say about it. If you move better, you live longer. You know, if I could give any of these young guys, if you move better, move with thought, you live longer. Moving with muscle, you, if you, I, I can move around this country by myself and never get into nothing just by the way I move, opposed to having paying five bodyguards to run around with me. And mm -hmm. what I found out is that a lot of times that see, if you don't have the right security, that can fuck you up. That can really mess you up. If you don't have the right guys, a lot of sometimes security want to be the celebrities. So they'll scream and hoop and holler something that had that that could just, I'm not saying this situation, I'm just saying in general, sometimes your guys, that who are you, who aren't security? Security is is somebody who has experience in protecting people, but also diffusing situations so nothing happens. It's not always about a reaction needs a reaction, and I think that there's too many incidences out here where an older guy with some with with some intelligence just isn't in the situation to diffuse it. 
that didn't have to go down like that. Me, me, when I was on the road, we go from the show to the hotel, we gonna chill. Niggas got girls, I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? We ain't running around the city. We're not doing that. Then we gonna get up early and we gonna get on the bus and we gonna move to the next city. You know, it, 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 you know, and I understand because me, see now, man, I go through the hoods and everything. It's different for me now, but I can understand the Migos are on a whole different other level of fame. So, you know, you have to be careful when I get it. But it's like some things you just have to avoid. Gambling, dice game with niggas, that's dead. We're not doing that. We're not gambling. That's so in real. That's so We're real. We're not being, I wouldn't give a fuck who we with. We're not gambling with nobody in another city. We're not doing it. It don't make no sense to do, to, to be gambling. And I'm only telling you from, because I ran my shit. My guys, it was, it was a situation where there, there was direction. And the direction had to be the smartest plan, the blueprint that's gonna get us home alive. When we're going on these tours, we're going through these cities. And, and that has to be first. Shit, takeoff wasn't even a part of that whole scenario. And that's just a situation that you could tell that, look, shots are going all off all over the place. I'm sure, I'm sure the shot that hit takeoff wasn't, it couldn't have been met as far as him looking like he was going to be trying to uh, do something. It's just that in, in close quarters, shots are being fired from everywhere, from both sides. So if, 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 if you move better and you move intelligently, you, you, you're going to live longer and, you, and you're going to make it to your next destination. There's a lot of bullshit that you have to avoid that can be avoided if somebody's there, maybe a little older, a little more experienced to say, hey, bro, we ain't doing that. And of course, they have to be able to respect the older guy. You know, OG just isn't a name, man. It's just not a, a slang. It's supposed to be somebody who's respected that the younger guy is going to listen to because he has experience and, he's, and, and, and knowledge in this type of situation. That's what these young rappers are lacking right now. And that's why a lot of them are dying. That's why a lot of them are, are, are overdosing, getting shot, beefing, because there's no type of structure of somebody who's 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 leading men. That's where rank comes in. Remember, you was talking about rank. Well, this is where rank comes in. Not rating rappers when you're with a group of guys and you're moving in a, in, in a different in, in different situations. You need somebody there that's going to point you in the right direction. And that's where only an older guy can do that. Yo, so so you mentioned OGs, um, and you mentioned Jay Prince specifically, and spoke about him as a man with a lot of integrity. He went on a million dollars worth of game. And it's one of the few times that you really heard him um, speaking directly to somebody. In this case, it was um, Offset. And um, it sounds like he got a real problem with Offset. Why, why, why do you think, you knowing that man, you knowing Jay Prince since the 90s, early 90s, being signed to him, doing business with him, why, why was it important for him? Because most times when you hear about Jay Prince, you hear about him squashing beefs. In, in this particular time, you know, I ain't gonna say he put it out there as a threat, but he made, he, it, it was a harsh truth. Like, yo, don't put me in a place where I got a fear for my life, where I got a fear for myself or defend myself to what, whatever he said. Why, why, why do you think he uh, made it a point to go on a platform as big as um, million dollars worth of game and, and, and put it out there like that? It's one reason, the internet. You know, people understand Jay saved more lives than, <laughs> Than, than you know, than what people think that he's done out here. And he, you're right, he has squashed a lot of beefs. A lot not of beef. Just, not just in the industry, but we're talking in Houston, another city. I mean, he's been there. He's been there at the meetings. He's been there at the sit downs. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't, they don't have the influence to even be a part of this. You know, I wish that JN offset, I wish any, at, at this point, I had to learn too. Bring in, Bringing stuff to the internet is only 
going to magnify it worse. It's going to, it's not going to, it's not going to, if the, if solutions are to be, if, if resolve is to ever to come, it's not going to be done addressing each other on the internet. And I think Jay knows that we're talking about men with pride and we're talking about the internet. You know, I've never heard Offset say too much ever. <laughs> you know what no, I'm saying? No, no, never. I mean, honestly, honestly, like, you know, the, the way the Migos carry themselves, from what I see, is they don't talk too much. And that's always good. That's yeah. always good. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm sure he's hurting. Oh, I'm sure Offset's hurting. You know, I mean, it looked like they really grew up together from the pictures and everything. Yo, I'm going I'm to I'm tell you them. something. Like, of course he hurting. Yeah, them, them dudes been doing this for 10 years strong that we know of. And they, and they grew up together. They and they grew up together. So no matter what that relationship was on the night that um, Take passed away, that's still his brother. Them feelings don't go nowhere. Yeah, so I'm the, the, sure he hurt him. But the, but, but the problem is the internet. It's the internet. Yo, speaking of internet. It should um, never gave black people the internet. That's one of the greatest quotes. I think that, that'll, that'll go down in history because it, it really is, as again, as much as it's given to us, it's taken from us. And man, I just wish that at this point, both parties just stay off the internet until some type of resolve can come because it's only gonna get worse by addressing each other and exposing each other on the internet. Okay, so let's stay on this whole internet thing for a second. Let's stay on the whole OGs thing for a second. Um, needless to say, what you call it, um, Offset came out and he was basically like, yo, everything you talking is fairy tales. Cardi B defending her husband. Yo, everything you saying is fairy tales. Too much um, for the police, Prez. It's too much. It's too much for the prosecutor. It's too much. Everybody just needs to just shh, just relax. It's still yeah, an open case you, going on. I, I, where I'm going with this is, I'm sure you heard by now, WAC 100 jumped in. Listen. And again. this is another OG. And essentially, he, you know, he made it clear. When I see Jay Prince, I'm going to test his gangster. Man. How, how do you think that that, that, that that would turn out? Do you honestly think that when Wack physically sees Jay Prince, he's going to test his gangster? Do you think, how do you think that's going to turn out? Let's just be honest. Somebody's going to die right there. And then what? Now, who are you proving to? Again, because when you're coming to the internet saying all this shit, you want clicks, comments, reactions, uh, you want praise, like... But, at, at, but, it, but, but is your life worth that? People are putting their lives, their breathable bodies at risk when they do shit like that. Do you honestly think that Jay Prince, after all these year, years, would allow WAC 100 to physically see him and cause harm to him? Because I'm not going to let anybody physically cause harm to me. Not, not at 57. That's it for me. Somebody tries to really violently hurt me, well then, Prez, I've fifty-seven's pretty good. I've, I've, shit, that's, I've lived a pretty, I've lived, a, I had a good run, yeah. Because that's how I mean, honestly, Prez, like, like, again, things are said on this internet for reactions. Wax says a lot of shit for reaction because that's how Wax is getting his money now through the internet. But that 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 don't that don't even make sense to me. See, I, I don't, you know, you know, I mean, I, I mean, if, if anyone thinks that you're going to, you're going to see Jay Prince and just physically do him harm at that time, let's, come on, man. Come on. We'd be well, better this talking much. about Mickey Mouse coming in a spaceship and dropping everybody a billion dollars. <laughs> like, for real, bro. Like, see, when you really come from the streets, a lot of this shit is just, it just, it don't. Because because you because then I, I put myself back in the 80s in a situation automatically I'm thinking about that and it don't match to the shit that's right now. So I just uh keep it moving. Nah, it ain't gonna end good for nobody. And um I don't know who the OG is in that situation, 
but I pray to God, Clarence Avon, and somebody jump in and, um, you know, Man, get them Jesus, two men Jesus to talk. Jump. Jesus going to have to jump in on that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah I you listen. know, on a lighter note, let me ask you something. Please tell me you saw uh, Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck at the at the Grammys. I see I seen clips of that, man. Listen, bro. Shout out to Ben Affleck. You know, Ben Affleck's <laughs> from Boston. You know what I'm saying? He's from the beans. So he be bagging him. You know what I'm saying? We you gotta give Ben Affleck his, but I can see how Jennifer Lopez would be problems. Like, it's one thing, a lot of times you're looking at these girls and the bodies and the and then they're on TV and you're like, yeah. But then when you're living with them and two weeks and a month and three months go by, you got to start dealing with that attitude. A lot of female celebrities, man, are real. They're not easy to deal with on a long-term basis in real life. And that, that looks, I mean, they already tried it and it didn't work. So he's already at the Grammys where he noticed millions of, 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 of cameras. That's some shit she's doing. That's pissing him off, like yo, just with, you know no, what I'm saying. Did, did you I, see I the almost... man's face? Did you see his face? Yeah, Ben yeah. looked like he was in hell. He yeah. looked like yo, just get me out of here. Like Jim like, Carrey oh, was just in a situation like yeah, yeah. Jim Carrey was just in a situation like that, where you know it just seemed like maybe all the the, the, the fake shit in, in in Hollywood and in this game is just pissing people off and they can't take it. Anymore. True talk. True to, you know, you know, it's a show. It don't matter. It don't matter who you are, how big you are. Yo, your lady will bring a different level of stress into your life, man. She gonna drag you places you don't want to go. And she there. gonna be able to get under your skin like no dude on planet Earth. I've been there. And that's why you got to make sure the person you with fits your fits your cheat, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, <laughs> because if they don't, you know, if they only fit your cheat in bed, then there's a lot of other things that a partner is gonna have to experience that, that your cheat is gonna have to fit. And being in public places, and one feeling that somebody's embarrassing them by their actions, that is the, that cheat's big. That part of relationship is big. And you gotta make sure that before you get with somebody that you can be in public places with them, the same harmonious that you got, harmonious situations that you have in bed, you're gonna have in a public forum, then that's the one. But if in bed you guys are amazing, but then you're in public and she's doing shit that's bothering you, or you're doing shit that's bothering her, well, that's a problem. Yeah, nah, they didn't hide it very well. I don't know what was going on. And maybe you, you just to keep it a hundred, this ain't his world. He's an actor. You know what I'm saying? And he always. I, I just go to. I just go to think that she's just difficult. Some Simple reason, as I, that. I just think that, you know what I'm saying, just with experience on some, you know, not of course, but I just feel like she just comes across to me as a difficult person. Like everything's just always going to be about the lights and everything 24 seven. That shit. And he, he probably was like, yo, you know, so you ain't bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not, you know what I'm saying? If, I, if my head ain't all like, you know, relax, you know what I'm saying? That's, you know what I mean? Yo, but at the end of the day, man, she be putting it on these dudes. So she must be doing something in that bedroom. That um, Well, that's then that's what I'm saying. Like, that's she, the, she got that Puerto Rican blood in her. She, she, she got, got that, that boogie down Bronx in her. Don't, yeah, don't get got, it twisted, Benzino. That's what that guy mean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get this twisted. I mean, as, as big as a headache as she might be, she the clearly putting something on these dudes in the bedroom. As she she had the headache is the head. ass is big. The ass is bigger. <laughs> you know, I rented her house one time in um in Miami, and uh, Bobby Brown and God rest Whitney and God rest Bobby Christina came over for the weekend. And me and my pop, oh, not shout the schnapps. Yeah, we had him for the weekend. I got a couple stories and shit, but we'll, we'll talk about that another day. But. I, you know, shout out to Jennifer Lopez because you know she allowed us to rent her her, uh, her house. It was one of her houses back then. And let let me say, and I was just giving my opinion. She's an amazing. She's a legend, not just in Latino world, but for a Latino woman to cross over, she, she's done major things. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Jennifer Lopez. True indeed. Um, yo, staying on legendary women, Beyonce. 
I love your segues, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody does it better. <laughs> close, get close. All right, to Nate, all man. Nah, we got we got to talk about your girl Beyonce. Yo, Beyonce number one. I mean, rank. I know you don't like the ranking, but but, but I, I mean, listen. You know, I mean, Beyonce at this point is the is the is is the how can I say it, man? She's just she's just eclipsed so much as far as the industry goes, and her fan base loves her to death. So I don't got nothing bad, or I. I don't have anything bad to say about Beyonce. No, I mean, yo, what? she got you know. something like 32, 33 Grammys, most in Grammy history. I don't think nobody works harder. I don't think nobody no, practices no. and works harder and focuses more on a craft than Beyonce. So. Yo, okay, so I got to ask you this. You, you you was just talking about Jennifer Lopez. You, you, you think Beyonce is a pain in the neck at home? I don't, you know, that's a, that, that's a good question. I, it, it doesn't seem like it because she stays away from the, from the press and everything, whereas Jennifer doesn't. You know, Beyonce's more, I'm gonna give you what I wanna give you, you know? She's not doing interviews, she's not out there. It's like she knows she's the shit so she don't have to just throw herself out there. And I think she's so comfortable within herself being a shit that it just doesn't bother her in a way. I mean, it just doesn't consume her in a way that these other female stars are consumed by. I think she knows that her work and her body of work speaks for itself. Where these other ones, they just, they have to use other means and methods to stay relevant and stay out there. Well, I'm not even that, talking that about to staying me, out that, there. That, it's, the, it's, the, it's the whole consume of this I have to be this all day, every day that a guy's going to get tired of. Oh. Beyonce, already, Beyonce already knows that. So, you know, she's not going to be all out there. I don't, she ain't going to be dealing with TMZ and extra and all that shit. She, you know what I'm saying? She doesn't, you know what I'm saying? She's, she knows she's the shit. But you want to know what's crazy? Because cause I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, like real talk. She know exactly who she is. She on a different stratosphere from everybody. But I don't know if you ever peeped this, but when it come to her man, I've never, ever, ever seen a clip where Beyonce is walking in front of Jay-Z. She always let that dude lead. She's always a step behind him. She making songs cater to you. She, like, Beyonce seemed like as big as I am, in the public eye, at home, I let my man be a man. And, and, and it's like, I don't know what going on behind, the, you know, they fought, they, they, they um, right. Worked. But the optics is what you're saying, exactly. Correct. Yes, 100%. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, Jennifer's not gonna put Ben in front of her. They'll either be side by side or he'll be in the back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, switch topics with me for a second. Um, yo, this is, so I, yo, hold up. I cannot, I can't, because I was going to go somewhere else, but I got to talk to you about this. You see Madonna? Yeah, man, Madonna's wild, man. But shout out to Madonna. So how, how old is Madonna? Madonna's 64 years old and got a whole new face. L listen, you know, now that facial reconstruction shit and plastic surgery, I ain't for that. I can't do it. It's just, I can't. So right? I'm like, never going to wake up and see Benzino with Botox or uh, a, a face transplant never. or whatever else is going on. Never, nah, 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 but you're never going to wake up. You're never going to see me with the woman with that. Only because I just, it just doesn't sit right with me because I'm all, it's always going to be in my head that this shit was altered surgically. And it just, it's just nothing that I'm, I, I grew up being used to. Now, I think 100 years from now, it's going to be nothing. There'll be so many women walk around here with that shit that's gonna be the norm, unfortunately. No, but Madonna don't even, I mean, did you see, like, she don't even look like, and, and I'm, a, I'm a Madonna fan. Let me start here. Well, I you love, know what she used to look like then, Prez. She looks like, it's different. It's different. <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely different. Like, 
I love the way she pushes the boundaries. I love the way she won't let age define her. She won't let her sex define her. And this is going back to the 80s with Madonna. Yeah. Madonna's been pushing the boundaries her entire yeah. career. Yeah. But, um, you know, see, see, seeing that new face on her, I'm like, yo, she, she didn't even have to do it because we love Madonna anyway. But right. I guess I guess you gotta wake up and you gotta feel good about yourself. Does that make her feel good about herself? Well, you know, a lot a lot of a lot of ladies I heard that they start, it be just just becomes a habit. They just can't stop doing it. Once they start, it just becomes, you know, you wanna try this now and try that now. So, but um I think Madonna, when you when we mentioned Beyonce is kind of being one of the I think from I think Madonna's that also as far as like her craft. Like they work yeah. hard. Dancing, oh. and singing, and dancing, and singing, and shows, and this. I mean, that's a lot of work, a lot of practice. And, Yo, um, think about it. Think about it. I think Madonna came out something like 1980, 1982. It was, it was one like, of them. Like a virgin. It's yeah, Exactly. It's 2023 right now. She got 40 real years, like 40 real years of going strong in this industry. So yeah. when you talk about, and you know, like I know, you've been doing this thing forever. You know how hard it is to stay relevant for to four maintain years. maintain yourself, yeah. But for, for no, 10 right. years. But to right. stay relevant for 40 years, I bet you if Madonna look around at every artist that was out at the same time she was out, she could count on one hand who's still, re not, not who's still living, but who's still relevant. Like, That's a good point. It's like real talk. Like I can't, I almost can't, because even as I'm talking, I mean, back in them days, it was it was a lot of big artists out. If they didn't pass away, they not relevant no more. I mean, Madonna, forty years ago, and and she always stayed. She she always put her music to relevancy too. Absolutely. You know? And you know, she's she's major when it comes to the LBGTQ. You know what I'm saying? She's major. But you want to know something? She was ahead of the curve with that, right? Right. Like, like. She carried LBGTQ. the flag. She carried the flag. No, that, like, and I'm talking about when it wasn't cool to do it. Like right. back in them days in the 80s, first and foremost, AIDS and HIV, that was just really getting started. And it was a death sentence. And, and it was this whole stigma around that community. Right. And she embraced them when it wasn't cool to embrace them. When, like, they needed, like when, been, when they needed to be embraced. Exactly. That's real shit. Exactly. Right? I, I, I'll give it to her. Yeah. Okay. Um, yo, I want to read something to you, right? Adidas made an announcement. Um, I think it was yesterday. They're in serious financial trouble. <laughs> I see you, boy. <laughs> They're saying, yo, they're set to lose. Hold on. And, and I'm, I'm going to get this right. They're expected to lose something like $1.3 billion in sales in 2023. And the company says it's because they're unable to sell off their, their Yeezy inventory. And ever since they dropped them, sales have been plummeted. What you think the head of Zex at... at Adidas is saying right now. Are Three they strikes. like, oh, we made the biggest mistake of our life? Well, well, Sean Prez, three strikes, three words. The Kanye effect. You know, Adidas, I got a love for Adidas because I've, I've, I've never had a pair of Nikes or Jordans in my life and I've been wearing them for 40, four years. Oh, ho, ho, hold on. You never, ever, ever owned a pair of J's or a pair of Nikes, ever. period? Now, I've been wearing Adidas for 44 years straight. If you go back and look at my old RSO 1987 one where we, where we took a picture, I had a whole Adidas sweatsuit on and some Pat Ewans. Um, Boston had a thing for Adidas, and I was heavy in the gang culture, and all we wore was Adidas, and I've, and I've stuck it through my whole life. A couple of times I went and bought some Nikes, and they just didn't fail right and ended up giving them away. So I was like, nah, I'm going to do it because, you know, I've I seen some shit that I really like. Um, when Yeezy came, when Yeezy was, was at Nike's, I was mad because I couldn't get Yeezy. When he came to Adidas, it was one of the greatest moments of my life. 
I could rock with him. But yeah, 44 years straight. Um, another unfortunate situation in, in the culture was the whole thing with Kanye. But um, Kanye's a creator. One of the probably, we'll go down the history of one of the greatest creators of our time. Creator, music, fashion, a creator. Um, top it both. Very hard to do, to be at the top, top. Very hard to be at the top of the fashion thing. Top of the hip hop is one thing, producer and rapper, but very difficult to be at the top of the fashion thing. That, you know, that industry is held down by Italians and French and this man from Chicago, from the shy, shout out to all my people in the shy, at the top of the chain of fashion when he came up. So, you know, he's, he's, he's made great strides. And it's personal to me because now it's like, you know, I, I love Adidas and I love the Yeezys. Um, I just wish, I'm in my wishing mode now, Prez. I wish Kanye just would have kept his, his statements to himself. Everybody. You want to know what's crazy? Um, because he really put the company in a bad position. Um, we live in a world, this is cancel culture. Everybody is woke. Everybody's socially conscious. I, I, I almost don't know if I was a head exec at, at Adidas, what I would have did. Because on one hand, they had to know stock was going to plummet. They had to know so many people came over to that brand and they didn't necessarily even support the brand. They supported the Yeezy brand. Right. But if we stuck with them, we run the risk of being canceled. That's a German co uh, company. Start, started, started, started by two brothers, Adi and Das. There you go. And then, and then one of them broke off, I think, and did, was it Reebok? One of them broke off and did something. I don't know. They, they, they I think it's stuff. Reebok or Puma. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Puma. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, you know, I just wish he would have kept the state. See, you know, all of us have certain, and I know about this, we all have certain things that, you know, opinions of people and opinions of cultures and races. If they're gonna be negative opinions, it's just best in business to keep it to yourself. I'm sure the, you know, the CEO of Louis Vuitton, the CEO of Gucci, and CEO of all these great designer houses have opinions on cultures. <laughs> You're not gonna hear them talk about it in public. You know, I just you see, what people got to realize, it's like, who, who said this, Prez? You know, you know, I have a certain set of skills, you know. And who said that in the movie? What's my man's name, That's man? your man, Liam Neeson. Um, what, what's, it, right. what's his name? Uh, Taken. So people got to realize, every God's given us a certain set of skills. Kanye's skill is to create, not to talk and be a politician. You know, you need, a, you need there's a, to be a politician, you know, it's, it's not as easy as people think. To be, to be, um, to be like a, 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 a revolutionist is not as easy as people think. You have to be cognizant of everything you say and who you're gonna, you know, who you're gonna insult. Uh, you know, he, he you, you can't be as big as he is and, and say blanket statements like that about cultures, and especially the culture that runs fashion, for the most yeah. part, sales of it in America, runs the music industry, runs the movie industry, runs the media. Same people that put you in position to be worth all this money, not have it, not saying he wasn't gonna get it because he was on his way. But you cannot, and if you was a politician, then you know you couldn't say things like that. You know, you cannot disrespect a culture of people. You gotta understand that this culture of people, no matter what anybody says about them, friends, these ghettos that we were in, they were in first, okay? That's why a ghetto is a Jewish term. 
They were there Yo, first. I didn't even know that. What? Yeah. They were there first. The ghetto was a Jewish. That they, they was there first. Remember, you know, the Italians, the Irish, they all came over here and they started making waves and jobs and everything. You know, the ghettos were the ones that were the niggas back then. And the way they climbed out of it was support each other. We're going to support each other. We're not going to buy with nobody else. We're not going to, we're going to support each other. We're going to do this with each other. And financially, that's what they did. And they sacrificed. You know, that, 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 them, them people wasn't worried about wearing Louis Vuitton. They was worried about buying it. You know what I'm saying? So in order to do that, you know, they, they didn't always have the Benzes and the jewelry and the, they worry about selling it to us. You know, yeah, it's yeah. rarely you're going to see a Jewish man, you know, and they're heavy in the diamond um, business, heavy Jewish people, but you're not going to see them rocking big <laughs> diamond chains and they don't even wear shit. It's a culture that got on their feet by unifying and dealing with each other financially and getting into industries that they knew later on would be major profit. This just didn't happen overnight. This is years and years of sacrifice and them going through the bullshit. And they just pulled them a sacrifice, pulled their money, bought a land, bought this, and everything that they got and owned, we kind of supplement. And, you know, that's okay. You can't get mad at somebody for that. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we should learn from it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at in our, in, in, in our communities. Our communities... Just a few industries we're talking, cleaning, nails, restaurant. Uh, we, we give billions of dollars to industries that we could just be doing ourselves and selling to and doing and building us up, but we don't do that. So we can't get mad at somebody else because they did it. Surely, Kanye, if you're in fashion and if you're in music, then, then you're gonna deal with Jews until you die. That's just, that's, it's their industry. So, yeah, I mean, um, he put himself and he put that company in a very difficult position. In our I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, Adidas would be all right, though. They've made so much money. And, you know, even if they sign chapter, I mean, listen, I don't know. You know what I mean? I can't speak for the for, for the Adidas Corporation. Like, again, it's personal with me because, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, again, 44 years straight. I know the motherfuckers only sent me two pairs of sneakers, all the millions of dollars <laughs> that, I, that I've done with them. So. You know, when I see other artists get de deal through Adidas, I'd be shaking my head like, damn. You know, the whole Boston, the whole city of Boston, you know, is, is Adidas style. You know what I'm saying? The, like the new, the younger generation is, is, is changing that. But, you know, the old heads, we still throw threes up. When you ever, all I do is throw threes. When you see me throwing up a three, it's, it really is because it's right. If you look at my old change, the three, you know what I'm saying? I've been Adidas yep. style. I got shit tatted on me and everything. So, you know, it's a little personal with me, man. I wish it, you know, I, Hey, listen, Kanye still is worth a lot of money and still a great creator. So he's going to be all right. I hope he's learned from this. I really have. I hope he's learned. I had to learn. I had to learn that. Whatever, everything that's on my mind, I just can't put out. You know what I'm saying? And, and I've took losses from it. So I understand. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm sure, I'm sure his messages in his mind are meant to help the masses. But sometimes if they come out wrong, then it could, it could do the opposite. True, true, one hundred percent true. Um, yeah, I want to switch topics for a second. I want your thoughts on something. The, the XXX Tentacion fatally shot and killed a couple of years ago. His trial. Um, it just started this week. It's been a long time, right? Trial. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, how many years big, he been dead, Prez? It's been least about three, three years. It's been about three years now. Oh, I just said something. Dead press. <laughs> I ain't even catch that. Oh, oh shout to Dead Press. Um, dope group. Okay. Um, yo, let me ask you. The, the, because three guys, you you mentioned the number three, and it got me thinking about this trial. Um, three guys on trial for killing um triple X, and one of them, I guess he turned states and he's snitching on his two co-defendants. Does, does snitching even, 
do snitching even matter anymore? Oh. I mean, at this point, at this point, not. Nah. I mean, you know it's gonna happen. I mean, you, you know, and, and and one out of three, there it is. You just got it. One out of three is gonna be a snitch. So you just that's the number. The number today is if you're doing crime, one out of three is right. And that number is a lot because there's millions of people doing crime. So there's hundreds of thousands, right? You know, um, but, but let me know. ask you this. Let me ask you, has this always been going on and with social yeah. media, yeah, course, with, with TV? Of course, course. It, it's been going on Yeah, even before social media, but now it's kind of made it acceptable. Because people who, who don't do crime have opinions on it. So they'll say, hey, listen, I would snitch too, and I would this and I would that. But they don't, they're not even in, and they don't even, they're living such a good life, they don't have to do crime. Some people have to do crime just to survive. Mm -hmm. and, you know, telling on somebody goes back to when you're a little kid. I mean, nobody likes to be told on. Nobody, who, who, you know, I mean, you go, go back when you was a kid and you did something. Oh, I'm telling mom. Right then and there, you know, you know you're going to be a rat <laughs> when you grow up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Any kid that was around you would be like, oh, Prez, I'm telling. Chances are he grew up a rat. You know what I mean? So I, I, have, I, I have no, nothing, no good words for rats. Because I grew up, my father, I was 11 years old when my father told me about snitching. And how he made the point I, I should never snitch, and I pass that on to my kids. No, but I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you something, Ray. It, it's no more code, no more. The coldest street, it, it's 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 a myth. It yeah. it don't exist. Like, well, don't put yourself in no position to snitch on nobody. How about that? You know what I'm saying? And and that's what that's what it come down to. How about that? Just don't put yourself in a position where you got to be sitting in the courtroom pointing a finger yeah. at your man. Like it's it's the crazy. Now here's the bugged out thing. I don't know if you heard this, but um, Drake, the the, the kid who's snitching on him, he has somehow convinced the judge and the prosecutor that Drake got something to do with that murder, and now Drake is being deposed. So then, like, yo, Drake, if and and they tell you could do it via Zoom. And if you miss that Zoom date, you're going to have to show up in this courtroom. But it done got so crazy that Drake done, Drake ain't had nothing to do with this. Yeah. It, it, and, and homeboy is pointing the finger at, I guess, everybody under the sun. And, and, and now Drake <laughs> somewhere like, yo, what I got to do with this? He probably, he probably said he, he listened to Drake's lyric and, and it made him have dreams or something. I don't fucking know, man. He's listen, man. Like I said, 2023, like, you know, I want to be teleported back to the 80s, me personally. It's 2023 shit. <laughs> I'm not, you know, any, you know what is any teleport machines at, Brez? Because this shit is, I, I don't know. It, it, this shit is, it's just, you. It, I know if I was back then and you was to come with me with all this, I'd be like, man, I wouldn't believe you. No, no, it's just, no. You, you couldn't make this shit up back then. It's a different world out here, bro. <laughs> it's a different freaking world. And, you know, to your point, it's accepted. It's yeah. accepted. I mean, 6 yeah. 9 still got a career. You know, yeah. Yeah. people still trying money. to turn on. And, and I'm going to tell you something. And, may, and, and, and you from the streets, I don't even know the rules of the game no more. I'm going to just keep it 100. Well, like the streets are over with. The streets are done. You know what I'm saying? There's no more streets because the internet took over them. So really, in all actuality, the streets are done. Like I said, you can't do too much because the internet sleuths and investigators are on your ass before the police are. Okay, so what's your thought? What's your thoughts on Gunner? He took a plea, and, and it's the same thing. The YSL um, trial started. They they trying to find jurors. They're saying that that trial is gonna last something for for a year, which is um, ridiculous. Several of those dudes took plea deals. Um, Gunner, he took his plea. He said, "Yo, I ain't snitch," but he did say, "Why sells a criminal enterprise?" Is that technically right. snitching? So okay, so I dealt with a Rico case myself okay. with Source Magazine, right? That started out as a RICO. The investigation lasted for like two and a half years. They interviewed over 100 people. 
And luckily for me, they just couldn't connect the docs for an indictment. So I got indict indicted for tax evasion, took it to trial, and won. This is how it works. A RICO was made up for the mob back then with the thinking that the RICO is, it doesn't work if, if snitching isn't involved. It just doesn't work because their whole thing is to get the head. And, you know what I'm saying, the head and even whoever is controlling the money, the businesses, they have to get, because that's how all the other guys eat. So the conventional thinking is if we take the head, everything else falls, right? That's why, you know, Sammy the Bull got over with killing a bunch of people because they it was so important for them to get John Gotti because their thinking is if we get John Gotti, then all these other guys fall. The mafia grows different heads, though. When one head goes, then another head comes. So, you know, but I'm just giving you how the feds think, that the feds would allow murder to be okay just to get the head. So in their mind, Thug's the head. And you know, shout out to Thug, man. Like, me and Thug did a, a song together, man. I got to meet him, man. I can only judge these guys on how they treated me, man. It was always, it was always dope, man. And you know, shout out to Young Thug. All right. But back on that. So in order for the prosecutor to make the RICO work, is once once they find out that um that you have, once they find out that in their mind is a group of men that's being organized with money to do different crimes, then, then what they'll do is they indict everybody on smaller charges, but the RICO can get them all indicted under the RICO act that they're all again. That's the thinking. So that is what gets, without the RICO, they wouldn't be able to get them all in at one time to sit down because a RICO is no bail. You know, the initial charges, I mean, Gunner had, I mean, it was bullshit charges from some of them guys. But because it was the RICO, that allows the judge to say no bail. And the thinking is, well, everybody else will lock everybody up. And since it is RICO, the numbers are enhanced. We'll put these numbers in these guys' minds and we'll just sit back and just wait. Just sit and wait. We'll sit and wait. And, you know, guys that beat the RICO charges, it, 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 you, you necessarily don't beat a RICO charge, but everybody will get sentenced just for the head won't go for life because the head in the RICO goes for life. State, Fed, if you're the, if you get charged RICO status as the head, you go for life. That's the that's the general thinking. In order to do that, you have to kind of play chess. So the first chess moves that the prosecutor did by what I seen was they go, that you know they figure that the defense is that hey that they're a rap that they're um, labeled which they are. Successful as hell. And was only going to get successful. Remember, Gunner just had a number one album in the country. Absolutely. Right? So, super successful. Again, group of guys that came from nothing. What they got established now is that, all right, Gunner, since, you, since the major, the major uh, charges, you're not a part of that. You have bullshit charges. So we're going to give you a charge. All you got to say is they're related. Now, maybe Gunn is thinking, hey, that ain't nothing. Just say that they're not a labor, that they're a gang. That's it. Just say they're a gang. And we'll let you go home today. Now, the significance is that later on, they're going to use that if the defense lawyer says, hey, my client is the, is the leader, is, the, is you know, he owns, this is his rap label. This ain't a gang. They make millions of dollars, dollars as a rap label. They're going to say, but the number one artist on the label just admitted that they're a gang. So that kind of, you know, if you're a jury, then you're like, well, damn, why would he say that? Well, the defense really could say shit he was pressured to, you know what I'm saying? Just to get out. But when you say things under oath, then that sticks. So when you look at the first guys that they let out, it was his family. It was the guys that started with him. And they, you know, they let out the guys who they said started with him, his blood family, and artists. And they just all wanted them to say that they were gay. So that that's gonna that that ain't gonna be good for Thug because I'm sure the defense is that they're that they're related. And they, you know what I'm saying? So that 
you know, I, I, I can't speak for Gunner and I can't speak for Thug because for all we know, Thug told Gunner to take the plea. For all we know. We got to see how it plays out. Um, but I do know that was the chess move. So now if they let five or six or seven out saying that, the rest of the members 28, the other 20, this is where the bodies and shit are going to come from maybe in higher crimes that we don't even know about. They're not even going to, now we're going to go to you and say, okay, did, did he tell you to kill somebody? Or did he tell you to do this? You know what I'm saying? Now a couple of these guys came and took, already took deals. One of them got a 30 year probation. Crazy. So, so, so it just, you know, it's hard to beat a Rico because of that alone, because they use people in that are, that are close to you against you. And, you know, I just shake my head every time I see somebody else coming out, you know, you know, taking a plea, because I know the only way they're going to give you a plea is, is if it's going to work on their case to get the top guy. And that's just what the Rico is. And that's how they made it. And that's how it works. And it works. Yeah. Um, you know, I pray, I pray for this man's family. I pray for all eight families. Like to keep it a hundred, man, Duga is very talented young man. Super um, talented. Gunner, super super influential. Talented. Super influential. Yeah. Super. So I pray it works out for all their families. Like at, at the end of the day, these are young black men, and um, you know, I I I I, I pray to God because from what I'm understanding, even if he get convicted on one of them, um, those, those charges, the Rico charges, just one. It, yeah, it's yeah. He's looking so, at twenty years. Right, but if he gets convicted as the head of a criminal organization, it's life. You know, it's just it's it's again, it's it, it's a lot. It's a lot, and again, you know, uh, I think the more, more significant stuff hasn't even been mentioned in the trial. So we're gonna, again, this is something that we're gonna have to wait and see. But I, I also pray for him, and um, because I know what it's like. It's you know what I mean. You know, like I said, I know what it's like coming up in these streets and having nothing. And you know, he helps a lot of people, and things happen in the streets. It's unfortunate. We got to be careful of what we say on these on these on these songs, though. Got to be careful moving forward. The hip hop community has to be careful. You know, it can't be so personal. You can mention things like, you know, kind of, you can mention things in a broader statement, but you can't be so personal with things that may have took place as far as in your raps. And I think that's, we, we have to stop that because man, they're using it against us. And that to me is, a con that's against our constitutional rights, but, a lot of things in the constitution, you know, don't, don't apply to us. Okay. So I got to ask you this, um, just sticking in the hip hop community in the streets, please tell me you hear the three, the three rappers in Detroit That's found crazy. dead. Like is this rap thing is, it's the most dangerous job on planet earth. Well, man, like, what, what, did you hear about that first and foremost? Well, I mean, first of all, Detroit's like my second home. Miami's like my second. So shout, shout out to Detroit, Miami. I mean, shout out to everywhere, but Detroit, I go back and forth. I just shot a movie out there. Shout out to my guy, Dennis, Dennis Reed out there. You know, I've been doing these, these movies lately and spend a lot of time in Detroit. Shout out to my guys, Pep, YBI, Lux, everybody. R.I.P. to Yacht, Cheddar Boys, my man Chan. I mean, shout out to... I mean, I got a lot of love in Detroit. Detroit's one one of our great black cities, you know. Yes, Shout it is. Yes, it is. Right. And unfortunately, you know, when the when the car industry took that major, you know, you know, kind of fell, a lot of jobs were lost. And man, I mean, it hit the communities hard. Yeah, Once a few again, years ago, the whole city went bankrupt. Bro, like it was everything just, out there failed. I mean, you go on whole blocks and every there's like one house on whole blocks of maybe 40 houses that are all abandoned and shut down. But Detroit has seen a resurgence. They, they're, they're building up downtown. I do know that, you know, a lot of Asians are buying up land in Detroit and them houses. I do know that. Um, once again, you know, I, you know, I, every, a lot of people moved out of Detroit, you know what I'm saying? You know, but, you know, we have to buy back 
these houses, man, and build back up our communities any way possible. I mean, there's too many black billionaires out here to, to, to allow this. I don't get it. I mean, honestly, like black people could go and buy a back all of Detroit and literally it would be a booming black city, but we don't do it. The Asians are coming and buying Detroit now. Now, you know they're going to look out for, like, for their own. That's just another example. But the, again, again, it, I don't think that had anything to do with hip hop. <laughs> you know, Detroit is just, you know, it's rough in Detroit. It's rough. You know, I did, I did a walkthrough. Oh, man, we were somewhere on Seven Mile, man. The next day, man, this kid just walking up there randomly, blowing people's head off. The same block that I did the walkthrough on the next day. Damn. I mean, it's, it's you know, you know, there's not enough police to police Detroit. And, um, you know, again, thank hip hop. Because hip hop is putting money in a lot of young guys' pockets up there. Thank God for that, because there's not, you know, jobs and everything. I mean, it's hard in Detroit. So, you know, um, rest in peace to those guys. I, again, the, the media are going to say rappers, but at this point, who's not a rapper? That's real. So I think, you I think we got to get, get that stigma out of that situation. I don't think that was like a rap situation, hip hop situation. It's just three, unfortunately, three, another young black men killed. And it, it just goes on every day in America and every hood in America. And the next day, the next week, nobody will be talking about it. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's so unfortunate, man. Um, you know, it's so sad, too, because I remember it first came out that they were missing. Then a couple of days later, it came out that they, the three, they found three bodies, man. So I, I don't know, man. It, it's so sad um, as a black man, as somebody who loves this culture. Like you, I love the D. I spent a lot of time out there. Um, so sorry to hear, and I pray for their families. Yeah, yeah. Um, as well. I, I got to ask you this um, on a lighter note. Okay. Your man, your man, LeBron James. Bro, one of the greatest the record in, in, in basketball. No, we thought say? that that record could be um, broken. That was a like, big record. It's a huge record. I mean, that record stood for 40 years. Big record. I don't think nobody, will, I don't think there's a person that'll, that'll break LeBron's record. I just don't. I don't think they don't have the, the you know, LeBron, people gotta understand, LeBron's body was made. He, he never got hurt. He's played all these games. Like 8,000 of those points, 7,000 summer just from the playoffs. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, almost the third, maybe 20% is from the playoffs. So what he's done is just amazing. Again, young black man coming from nothing up there in Akron, Ohio. You know what I'm saying? I just got back from Cincinnati. I love, you know, again, the black people of Ohio and just the people in general, white people too. People in Ohio are really cool people, man. Really, really good people. There's something about Ohio that I don't know, man. They just the love I get from Ohio and the shouts and shouts Ohio. Um, and then all the hoods, Dayton, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and LeBron's up in Akron. I'll be in Columbus next week on the 18th. So anybody up there come through. Um, yeah, I mean, come on, man. The greatest record known to man. And they're trying to make it a point because AD sat down. I seen you see that. They said that. When when he broke the record, you see AD sitting down on the bench, and he didn't celebrate. I mean, everybody in the Staples Center was like, "Yo, did did, did you see him?" Or the crypto, or the crypto bankrupt dot com arena. You know what I'm saying? You know that crypto sheet. Believe me or not, it won't be crypto next year. But you know, AD should have stood up. Nah, His thing yo, was they were losing. He was mad. So fucking what? You're still getting millions of dollars, and your man, who you're under the same uh, agency with, just broke the biggest red record all in basketball. Suck it up, get up. You should be the first one out there hugging him. Nah, your man, your man Kareem. He looked like I mean, I, I know it took everything, and and here's the deal, right? I got a lot of respect for Kareem because if you look behind me, you see Muhammad Ali. Back what they was doing in the 60s when it wasn't cool, they was making all that money and they was willing to put it all on the line for the advancement of not just themselves, because they was making money. 
but they was putting it all on the line for the advancement of black people. Of the culture. And Kareem has been into social activism his entire life. As a Muslim. Correct. As a Muslim. As the Muslim. Shout, to, shout to the minister, you know what I'm saying? Correct. Yes. So I'm like, yo, you know, come on, man. Like, like at least act like you happy that you well, live long enough to yeah. see somebody and, and LeBron does it right. For I his agree. entire career, he ain't been caught up in no scandals. I agree. He, 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 he's a gentleman. You ain't heard about him cheating on his wife. You ain't heard about him getting coked up in no hotel. No. He, he done it like by all accounts of the public, he's done it right. You got, you have to shout out to his mother. She Absolutely. raised him well. She, 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 she raised, raised him, him well. well. But, she, but she, she sheltered he, him from the shit point streets. Is, right? the huh? my, my point is, he is everything that Kareem Abdul Jabbar fought for. Embodied. He's the living embodiment of it. Yes, yes. So when, when you see him and he don't seem happy, yo, it's a record. Records are meant to be broken. You're right. Come on, bro. You're right. You're right. Him and Anthony Davis were probably the only two in there that were feeling funny about the situation <laughs> for, their own, for their own reasons. Like the two tallest men in the Staples Center. You know what I'm saying? I keep calling it the Staples Center, but yeah, you know, you know what, Prez? I have nothing to say behind that, bro. You absolutely 100 percent right. Um my 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 thing with Kareem is is uh game of death when he when he fought Bruce Lee. Absolutely. You know, you know, Kareem is is definitely my guy. Um, but yeah, you're right. You know, he it looked like he he was a little salty the record got broke. But you're right. You know what I'm saying? It's not like somebody broke it who was, you know, an asshole. LeBron for the most part is a good guy. And he, he you know, he doesn't come across as gangster and he just laid like, he's a he's a great father from what I see. And you know what I'm saying? He's done everything from the mud and will go down in history as one of the greatest ever. I still, yeah, personally I, mean, think, I, still, I still personally think Mike, um, for me. Hold on, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You the one who said we say, don't do the rankings. I didn't, no, no, no. So, so, I'm, so hold on, is, is LeBron the GOAT? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say Mike is. You gonna stick with Mike? Yeah, I mean, sports is different. I think you can rank sports because everything is based on numbers when it comes to sports, you know? Statistics. Okay, so so, wh why are you saying Mike? And 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 just so you know, I'm challenging you. Okay. But my uh, sentiments are with you. I still think Mike is the goat. But why oh, do you do. say? Because he came from our culture. He came from our well, our, our our generation. I'm sorry. He came from our generation. You know because you know Mike. I don't want LeBron and nobody to take this wrong. LeBron didn't grow up too much with a dad in the house. Mm -hmm. Mike was raised by his father. So it's a different dynamic of man right there. You know, Mike just, Mike's whole attitude was just alpha man, I'm that nigga, and just carried it. It was just, man, like you couldn't get it more. LeBron more, you know, back in the day, you could talk shit to LeBron and kind of scare him out of his game. I think the last few years, LeBron kind of stopped being more as he's getting older. And I think as the son's getting older, he's being more of a man. But LeBron was a little soft. Though he his skills were amazing, he still, his temperament, his inside was still a little soft. And that might have been because he was raised by his mom. You know what I'm saying? You know, mama's boo. You know? Um, but that that's the only difference, you know? And that's why, you know, me, I'm, you know, cause I'm a man's man's man. I just, you know, and I just, I can feel that type of energy. And Mike was that guy, man. He just, the way he did it, you know, and, but there's not too much different from them, but that, you know, so, you know. So you're gonna still go with your boy, Mike? Only because of, he's my generation. I if I grew you. up in this generation, it would be LeBron, I'm sure. Or well, the generation before me, it would probably be, I'm sure it probably, it, it, it would probably be. Um, I love Durant too, though. I think Kevin Durant, see, I, I love, love Durant. I see, love Durant. I, I, I just wish Durant 
was stop switching teams. Yeah, but just got traded again. But but that's all right though. If listen, if you're smart enough to do it, then do it. Nah, man. Like, I'm gonna tell are, you. I'm gonna tell man, you. And this is half of my be... problem with LeBron. And again, maybe this is the OG in me. And why I say Mike, why I still give it to Mike. Mike took that franchise. When Mike got on the Chicago Bulls, they was nothing. They wasn't even contenders. And he took that franchise and he made them into a dynasty. This new era, and I'm going to say LeBron ushered it in. LeBron. LeBron did that with Cleveland. Yes, he did. No, Le 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 LeBron, LeBron started in Cleveland. Then he moved to Miami. Like, like, then he go back to Cleveland. Then he go to LA. Because like, just the rules once upon a time, players stayed at one team. Um, Ray. No, I know, I know, I know. I'm with you, but I'm going to debate with you, like you said. But the rules allowed you to do that now. The way how you can move. Yeah, but I don't now, believe in that. All that but, trading and making. I don't super know, Prez. Listen, listen, Prez. If you had the opportunity to go to sunny Miami and play down there with with Shaq and or Dwayne Wade or somebody. You would go your contract. I did it. Back then, I did it. Then, <laughs> back then, Mike Mike wasn't able to do that. The contracts, the way they were, wasn't allowing you to do that. Um, you know, so I mean, yeah, like you know, like I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get it. But it was the dynamics were changed, and they allowed these guys to do it. So why not? Um, it's kind of cool for the cities. Shit. Everybody can tell you. I tell you this much, man. I j I just think is I think it I think you know. And again, I don't have the skill set to be out on that court. So so take what I say with a grain of salt. But but trade getting traded and creating these super teams, it it it, it almost don't even seem fair, right? I'm like, excited. I'm excited now to watch the NBA. With I mean, the, the trade deadline was crazy. I'm excited what? to see KJ with Chris Paul and Devin Booker. I'm excited for that. I'm a Boston fan. I believe we're going to win a championship this year. I think we're just dope. Yeah, we Boston nice, looking good. Boston we have a nice good. young core that's sticking together like a Chicago, the way they did it back then, with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. These guys are like Scotty, you know, and, and we're keeping them together. But again, back then, contracts was allowing that. Nowadays, the, 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 the longest contract you can get is four or five. And now, you know, the way it is is, if they're not winning with that superstar, the best thing to trade them is some young guys coming forward. It's just the dynamics of the contracts and the rules of the NBA now where, when it comes to that have changed. You know, Mike was going through a lot of bullshit with them. If the rules was back then, Mike would have been jetted from Chicago. He would have been tried to go play with somebody else and, and, and win maybe, champions. Maybe, just that, but the fact it, that he stayed, it just makes his legacy he that had much to stay, yeah, but, but remember, he had to stay. There was nowhere else he could go. He was still in the contract with Chicago. He hated Ryan Soff in them. If he, if it, it was a, if, if 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 it could allow him to go to New York to play with Pat Ewing, or allowed him to go to Indiana, he would have went. You think Mike would have been out? If, yes. Could you imagine? Can you imagine him and Reggie Miller playing together? In it would have been over. It would have been over. Over. But just like Scotty, Scotty ain't no scrub. So Scotty's a, a superstar legend, dope. And then when Rodman came in, look, if Rodman never was able to go over to Detroit, he didn't go with a bullshit team. He went to play with Mike. That's so without Rodman, could they have done it? I mean, well, they did it without Rodman, but they well, got them extra three with Rodman. Right. But I'm saying once, once after those three and he came back, if Rodman wasn't there, I don't think Mike and them would have won all those. I don't think they would have won three in a row. But, but I'm, I'm going to tell you something before we switch topics. And those rules allowed Rodman to go there. That's what I'm saying. That's when it started getting to where Rodman really was the one who kind of started that. He left the dynasty and went to another dynasty to go play with Mike. He really was one of the first ones to do that. Yeah, he was. I, you know, I never even thought of it that way. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you're probably right. Yeah. But yeah. before we switch topics, because I'm thinking about it, first and foremost, I don't think Scotty get the credit he deserved. Um, Agreed. You just talked about how great of a player he was, an amazing player, and there's no way on planet Earth that that team wins six championship rings without Scotty. Impossible. But, but, yo, my brother, what's the thought? Like, like, Michael Jordan's son? 
That 2023 shit, bro. I keep telling you, man. Yo, Find me a teleport. Vizito, what what is going on in the world? Like he's smashing his auntie. Like like Scotty's ex wife Lassa. She she's like auntie Lassa to this dude. Is that not banana? Like wait, like what part of the game is this? He had to be looking at that kid running around when he was about what twelve years old. Younger than Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. I, you know, hey. Yo, I but mean, but does that say something more about her? Of course. Or does it say more that, about him? Has nothing has nothing to do with. I mean, it's her. Come on, of course, of course. I mean, she makes headlines dating a new famous guy every you know every year. So, yeah, but I could I could turn it around and say, yo, like it, it's it's a bro code out here. Like, son, you don't sleep with your man's girl. Like that was his wife. Like that wasn't his girl. She got something like four kids with him. That's Uncle Scotty right there. Listen, I've had my little running with that. I, so there's not too much I can say. <laughs> <laughs> there's not too much I can say on that. You know, I mean, I guess shit happens. Look, if they're happy, that's all that counts. I'm sure Scotty ain't got no problems with going grabbing up something bad and tasty out here. You know what I mean? So it is Yo, what it I'm is. I'm gonna tell you, this is this is where I'm an OG. Just, like sometimes, like back in the days, you didn't go in behind your man. You just didn't. Oh, it's just a whole new world out here. And I'm gonna tell you another thing. You know Scotty and Mike, they got problems. So you know. This just like them two probably and never talk again. Or for all I know, they talking behind the scenes like, yo, Mike probably had to call that man. Now, when it like, comes to Lars, I'm sure when it comes to Lars, Scotty don't care no more, man. If he cares, then that would really mean that he still loves her or cares about it. At this point, I would hope not. I mean, you, you don't, don't think it's just a respect thing, though? Yo, you know what? No matter what, man. Um. It's just a different game out here. I, I, I hope it works out for the best, um, you know, but I, I know Scott, like whether whether he feel a way about his wife out there dating, it's not the fact that she's dating, it's who she's dating. And, um, you know, sometimes you just gotta, some, some things are just off limits. And I don't know if that's cool, you know, to be dating your aunt. From from Marcus Jordan. Well, they're standpoint. not they're not related now. You know, it's, yeah, it's not. Come on, that was family to them. You know that. We don't know what type of relationship Mike and Scotty had back then. I don't know, man. We know that they we know that they won championships together, but personally, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? If they was close as we thought they was, or as they would we would like to think they would be, because a lot of times we're looking at relationships on the court. And we're just thinking that they're just one big happy family, and that's part of the, of the mystique and of of the enjoyment of our thoughts. But you know, after you play that basketball game, I'm going here and I'm going here, and at that point, you know, all the attention was at Mike. So maybe Scotty could have felt some way, or Mike. You know, I mean, who knows? You know, no, nah, you 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 raise a perfect point. Yeah, I who mean, knows? maybe so, maybe it's not as crazy as it looks on the outside. I don't know. I mean, my thing is as much money as Mike's son got. Cause she's older, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he's just having fun, man. That's, and maybe you, know, you never know, shit, Mike's probably laughing with a cigar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, you know, Mike is drinking some of that brown and got a cigar <laughs> throwing his head back. Ha 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 ha. But Mike better be careful because calm is a motherfucker. Who you telling? <laughs> Who you tell? And ain't nobody exempt. I was gonna say that. You I was gonna say that billionaires are not exempt. <laughs> no, ain't nobody exempt, kid. All right, yo, let's let let we talk about the goat. Let's keep it there. Let's 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 stay on this goat talk for a second. We talked about LeBron, <laughs> we talked about Mike. Now we gotta talk about the other Mike, Michael Jackson. Oh uh, uh, yo, a friend of mine. What? Me and yeah, me and Mike have history. Get out, hold on, educate me, kid. I yo, you got to meet the legend. So I was working on shout to Kadar Masterberg that signed me to Motown Records, and Teddy Riley was producing the album. I went down to Virginia Beach to where his studio was at. The great Teddy Riley that produced those hits for Mike, and it just so happened that we was at the studio and Mike had came down for two weeks. 
And Teddy's studio isn't more than 4,000 square feet, maybe with two rooms and then the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And um, Mike came there and blew me the fuck away, bro. Myself, Jeff Two Times, and rest in peace, JB, the great. Um, you know, we was producing my album at the time also, Hangman 3, and uh, we had one room and Mike had the other. And he came in with his kids. His kid was always covered up, you know, the two kids and the baby. And his and the baby's, I guess, the assistant caretaker, Ramon, Ramona. And um, got to spend two weeks with Mike, man. He took us, he would shut down David Buster's and we would go there, like 15 of us, and nobody would be in David Buster's, just us. And Mike would be in there with a long trench coat. He used to like the flight simulator game, the uh, like where you land the planes and shit. Uh -huh. And it was like, I couldn't fucking believe it, bro. We even got to play him one of our tracks and he was kind of digging, you know what I'm saying? This track that um, we had produced and he was digging. He was like, oh, this would be amazing. But you know, he, he never sung on it or whatever, but yeah, man. And then one time I had a long conversation about him, about the Eminem situation where M had dissed him in the video. And we talked in my hotel room for about 30 minutes and he was thanking me, you know what I'm saying, for kind of sticking up for him. And um, he was mentioning a lot about Tommy Mottola and crazy shit. And he was saying how, you know, it's, you know, about the bad stuff that, that, that these record label heads do. And a lot, I, I would just listen. I'd be in awe the whole time. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've been following Mike since uh, ABC. Yeah, Big yeah. part of my life, you know? And like you said, you know, another guy, Mike reminds me, you know I mean? When you see, I mean, such a, an amazing talent, you know what I'm saying? Such a, just a great personality to always seem happy. And I just was just blown away to be in his presence. I want to shout out to Teddy Riley, my brother, you know, making that happen. Yeah, so um, hurt me bad when he died. You know, I cried actually with Mike died. I shed a tear. No, you know, I mean, they hurt everybody when he passed, bro. I mean, um, no matter no matter what you felt about him personally, um, you know, Mike was so much a part of our of our world. <laughs> to 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 I remember when he passed. I was actually on my way to LA. I was in the airport when I got the news. I was on my way to LA. Um, I think it was to the BT Awards. I think the BT Awards was going on around the same time. I could be wrong, but I think so. And um, I, you just to fathom, because remember, Mike was always in the news for something. He just, you, you felt like you knew it. And I got a chance to meet him one time. One time. Um, but just to think of a world without that man that I've, that's been Mike since I've been born. Right. It, was, it was crazy, man. It touched me. But he left so much great music and so so much of a great catalog behind. behind. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. I don't know if you caught wind of it, but it's looking like Sony might buy Mike's catalog. He, you know, here's the crazy thing, because I want to set this up right. Let me look, look at my notes so I can get it right. Justin Bieber, as you know, he just sold his catalog, 200 mil. Um, Bruce Springsteen, he sold his catalog. 500 mil. And when I say they sold a catalog, it's completely gone. They got nothing. To, so they, they can't say one thing about how it's used moving forward. Mike's catalog is looking like it's selling for 900 million for 50%. And his estate still has control on how the music is being used. Is that not insane? Well, it's not just his music. You know, he bought Elvis, he bought the Beatles, he bought- He got Elvis too? Yeah, he bought, he, he bought, if I'm not mistaken, m and I mean, he bought a lot of the major- I, I know artists. he got the Beatles, for sure. Yeah, he got Elvis. Damn. And yeah, so he was smart enough to buy everybody's catalog. And, you know, look what it's worth now. I mean, 50% so, of it is going for damn near a billion dollars. That's 50%. why- 50%. That's why you can't argue who the greatest was when it comes to him. I mean, he's just, and not just saying because, again, not putting him number one or whatever, I'm just saying the greatest at what he did, like a Beyonce, like a Madonna, these people put in hours and hours and hours of their lives practicing and practicing. They just don't go in the studio and then come out and they were, no, that, that, their whole thing 
you know, and they are the epitome of what an entertainer is. And, you know, if anybody's a celebrity, it's them. See, I never yeah. bought into the whole celebrity thing. But if anybody is a celebrity, it's those three people that you mentioned today on the show. Madonna, Mike, Beyonce, these are three. They're just not singers, just not dancers. They are the, the what the world has considered great entertainers. And, and they're different from everybody else. We'll say that. Yeah, they're just different. I mean, that's the best way you could say it. Yeah. It's just different. Like, like yeah. it's levels to this. Yeah. And um, they're, they're on the they're top at a level. They're, they're, they're on the top. They're on the roof. They're yeah. on the roof. They're in a different stratosphere, kid. Yeah. Okay, um, you touched on this earlier. So I'm not going to go deep with it, but I have to mention it. Um, Billboard put out top 50 rappers of all time. I just want to read the top 10 to you. Just tell me if you agree or disagree. I disagree. If people even belong in the top 10. I, you don't I even disagree. have to mention <laughs> I see it. Would you say? Read it, please read it, please read it, yes. Here's your top 10, number 10. And this is of all time. This ain't of 2023, it's of all time. But the person writing it doesn't even, didn't even know hip hop probably for the last 15 years, so. Uh, Hold on, I, I, save your thoughts. You Save your thoughts, just hear your top 10. Nicki Minaj, number 10. Snoop Dogg, number nine. Drake. Wheezy. Notorious B.I.G. Eminem. Tupac, Nas, Kendrick, and Jay-Z number one. And I went from 10 down to one. What's your thoughts on that list? Uh, it's an unfortunate list because, because, because there's a, a bunch of others who weren't being mentioned. And if, if, if you could add, if you could add three names to that list, I'm not going to do it. I'd have to add, I, you know, again, it's just, I can't because, you know, there's a, there's just, a, there's, there's too many people that I just have so much respect and admiration in this game for. It's just not fair. And again, you know, I mean, if you're only going to, I mean, like, if your knowledge is just top 40 rap or top rappers in the pop culture of things, then you wouldn't know everybody else. You know, so. Somebody like a buckshot shorty, you would fucking know nothing about. You know what I'm saying? Like you would know nothing about a JT money. You would know nothing about, you know, um, three, two down in Houston, rest in peace. You would know, I mean, yeah, I mean guys, you know, Pimp C, we can, I mean, look, Scarfit, we, we can go on and on, Karis One, Rakim, EPMD. NWA, MC Ren, Ice Cube. Like, we can go on and on and on. It's preposterous. Whoever wrote, whatever group of people that sat around or person that wrote that, they have no clue. I bet you they don't put their name on there, so they'll say Billboard. So, you know, Billboard, the guy that owns Billboard doesn't even, has he doesn't probably even listen to hip hop. So again, Somebody has a job to do. They're a journalist for Billboard and they have a job to pick out because these things attract clicks and comments. And that's all they're out for. But the person writing these or reviewing these or making these lists, bozos who, who really know nothing about the culture. That's, that's my take on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you, to go back to your point earlier, you know, what, what is really the criteria? Um, is it is it album sales? Is it impact on the culture? Um, body of work? It is hard to come up, but when I read that list and I'm not, you know, I'm just like, word? Like, I don't know. But well, it mean, is what it they is. Didn't put, at least they didn't put Eminem number one. I, mean, I was waiting for that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was waiting for that, so. Hey, five, you know what I mean? Maybe we're moving with inch, we're moving closer to, but again, it's but but here's the deal. Here's the deal. He deserves, all, to, be ten ten. He deserves to be in the top ten. He deserves to be in the top ten. All ten of them are all great artists. Simple. But I, but there is no top ten. There is no top 20. There is no top. It's whoever you like. Whoever Sean Prez likes. 
I don't give a fuck what nobody else's list is. Because at the end of the day, when I put my headphones on, I'm listening to all kinds of shit. I'm not just listening to Jay-Z all day, every day. I'm not just listening to Snoop or Eminem, no disrespect to... No, I'm listening to everybody, and so are they. Yeah, yeah. Go ask the top 10 who they listen to. I'm so I'm I'm surprised that Kendrick made it the number two of all time. Um I, I maybe I just missed it. I'm not saying he don't deserve to be in the top 10. But the number hard, two. Man. You're talking thousands and thousands of rappers that you've listened to that have that have done some pretty dope shit, bro. And yeah. you've been a part of rap in many generations. Yeah. So it is gonna be hard for you to understand somebody in this new generation to be over somebody that you was grew up on. So just keep that in mind. Nah, I mean, I, and I'm gonna tell you something because we're talking generational talk. Drake made it on that list. I think he was number eight or something like that. Um, I mean, it almost feel like like Drake Drake playing this game different. You know, I gotta respect that youngin. Like he he. I mean, what would Drake come out in like '08? He, he makes great back videos. since. My son told me he was gonna he was gonna do this. My son told me, he, everybody told me when he first came out. I mean, he has an amazing body of work, you know, musically, culturally. Um, culturally, he's, he's, he's been able to insert himself in a good position also. You know, he, he came up under Lil Wayne and then he has ties to Jay Prince, he has, you know, baby. So culturally, he's under a set of very successful and, inf and influential organizations. So I, I don't have anything bad or anything indifferent to say about Drake. Drake is who he is. Yo, um, you know something? I got to ask you a question. Can, can, cause Drake had the whole scandal with the ghost writing. Um, can, does it matter to you as, as a, as a executive, um, as somebody who's been in hip hop for the last 30 plus years of your life, somebody who was an artist, does it matter to you that a that a rapper makes the top ten, or makes the list? Period. If they had ghostwriters, well, making the list and and doing and just making great music are two different things. So I don't think music is made like in a band. You know, when, when we came up in bands, you'd have your guitar, bass, drums, singer. Everybody's contributing to a beautiful composition that touches your soul and your spirit. But all that matters. Who's in the studio? And what comes out is the final product. It's all that matters. Now for a list, that's different. Okay, if you wanna be on some type of list, then it, it would be good that you write your own shit because you're on the list and not everybody else that was in the studio with you. But if it's just the music, I don't mind that. I've worked with writers. I've, in, I've written a lot of my shit, but I've, you know, sometimes you sit there with somebody, me, and me and Stevie do that a lot when we're in the studio. We just go back and forth and we're just, you know what I'm saying? I'm, he'll say some shit and I'll write it down and I'll say some shit to add to it. That's what music's about. It's about people coming together to make amaz an amazing composition. If you can do it by yourself, then that's amazing. That's beautiful. I've done it by myself and I've done it with writers and I've come up with some pretty good songs. But I don't put too much behind that. You know what I'm saying? You know, whoever's in the, what, Press, me and you could be in the studio and you know what I'm saying? You say some shit that would inspire the head the hell out of me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, inspiration. Nah, I couldn't agree product. with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. Like, like real talk, I'm not a rapper. I've never been in front of the camera like that. Never been in a booth. But, I mean, I, I, I done sat in that studio many a night with many of the greats. And, if somebody they pen, they write shit. a rhyme, somebody gave them an idea right. and, and they wrote it and put it into a verse. Right. You know, you never know where creativity is going to come from. Absolutely. And I, I don't, you know, I, you know, I had this talk with a lot of dudes and some dudes feel like, yo, if, 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 if a person don't write a hundred percent of their rhymes, they cannot be considered a, one of the greatest rappers. And I think different, you know, so what? Somebody get, I mean, some of the greatest rappers of, of all time, people have given them a line or two, given them a hook. Um, 
they didn't write 100 percent of their stuff and i still consider them some of the greatest of all time so i just wanted to get your thoughts on that we agree on that we um, agree on that yo how crazy is it oh uh, right down in your backyard qc quality control scooter yeah. bronze company it looked like it just bought them out something like 320 mil congratulations well, congratulations Pete. to him and coach and um, him and coach K, and coach k been doing this for a long time that's my bro congratulations congratulations, congratulations because you know again guys that come from nothing um they've been involved in this this movement down here since day one and you know that i don't think they get the credit they deserve for taking these young guys and putting them in better situations not just them but people around them that are getting checks, you know what I'm saying, to have jobs. Um, I also think that all the craziness that's going around, you know, with the Migos and everybody, I, it's probably they just felt like, look, you know what I'm saying, we might as well cash out now. Um, but you gotta understand a lot of this cashing out is a lot of this because of how streaming services are robbing the artists. You know, that's why they can give these deals because they know how much money they're gonna make because of them robbing the people who are making the music. It's like $3,000 for every million streams or something. Like that's that's robbery. See, before they couldn't do that with, with physical copies, they were in a sense, but now they're just robbing motherfuckers because you really never know how much your shit is streamed because they control that. Yeah. So the reason why all these deals is like this is because the artist is being robbed like at all time high. Streaming, the, the streaming situation and the rules of streaming and, and, and all the, the, it, the believe me, they, they're robbing them blind. And that's why these publishers can give all this money because they know what they're about to make. Now, imagine if you're giving out $500 million or $300 million, a quarter billion dollars, and you know that you're about to make a couple of billion because you're not going to do it if you didn't know that. These guys already have the forecast of what they're going to make only because that the math isn't adding up for the artists with these streaming companies. Yeah, it's something that um, not enough people are talking about. Like th these algorithms, number one, you don't even know. You can look and you, you dumb happy. I got a million streams, but you don't know, like technically there could be two million streams. It's just what's being- Five million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you just never know. And then to your point, what is it? Three thousand, five thousand dollars for every million streams? It's crazy. Oh, bro, that's pennies. 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 We're just going and, per stream, and we're just going for it again. We're just going for it, but want to blame them? You know what I'm saying? Later, listen. If they're gonna get over on us, we we need to fight back with intelligence than we do being mad at what they're doing. Cause shit, yeah. I'm sure. We would, we, we would do the same thing if we was in power. Yeah, Yo, nice. before I let you up out of here, I got two more questions for you. Talking about money. Please tell me you saw your man Flo Rida. $82 million awarded. He went to court. I, I, what, what is that drink called? Celsius? Yeah. And, and, and he was supposed to have a percentage of that company. He he got on board with them early. They promised him a percentage, never paid him his money. Company blows up. And the jury awards him $82 million. Well, you know, first of all, shout out to Flo Rida. Couldn't happen to a better guy. Another guy that's been, that's done great things down there in Miami, Florida. Did it in a different way. Never made songs that were harmful to the culture always party records and did it where a lot of people kind of doubted him. I know his producers, I know him and you know what I'm saying? That's a great, that's great news. That's great news for him and congratulations to him. And he's smart enough to go and hire and had the money to hire lawyers to go Correct. fight that. If you don't have money to, to get the lawyers to fight it, a lot of these situations just go unnoticed and unheard. But he had the money to go to go fight it and, and he won. And that's a great thing. And 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 I and you know, these labels, you know how much money that that these labels were robbing artists for every day and companies. So when somebody gets awarded that amount of money, 
for doing them wrong. Yeah, that's 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 God a good bless thing. him, right? God, God bless him. God bless him. Yo, God here's a crazy God. thing. He's like, yo, I've been good. This wasn't even about the money. Right. And now 82 million, I'm pouring it back into my community. This is yeah. all going to philanthropy. And I'm going to use it. He, he's like, yo, musically, I don't need to work. I don't right. need to work again. The music money took care of me. Right. It did. He had this big 82 international he, records. Flo people had don't realize how big his records were. Listen, his records right now are on Kroger commercials. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Big into the, 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 the My House, My House, that's all over ESPN. And that, I mean, he has major international records. Yep. Okay, so, um, and him saying that is, is that that's, that's the best of our culture shining right there. And Ooh, he I like that, Benzino. I like that. You said that's the best of our culture shining. True. Nice. I give him his props. Okay. We're going to end it here. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Hip hop turned 50. It's a big celebration of hip hop all throughout this year. Do you think the source with you and your brother Dave Mays, <laughs> are y'all getting the credit that you deserve? Well, first of all, 50th year of hip hop. I can't call Dave my brother anymore, Press. You know, Dave is on his crusade to like, tell people I, I didn't have anything to do with the source. And I wasn't with, I mean. I, I Hold on, hold on to Dave's credit. I sat with Dave. I know. He gave you credit. Right, but he's just not, but, but I see Dave making fake pages and I mean, I, Listen, I could go on and on. I don't want to get too much into it, but Dave has changed drastically from what he's done, said to you, and what he's trying to put out there on fake pages and shit. You know, Dave's gonna, the, the, the Source Magazine story, people, people want to hear that story. So you would have thought that me and Dave would have told it together, but Dave's telling his story without me. So I have to tell my story. And, I haven't spoke to Dave in almost seven years. And, you know, again, it's good that you had that interview because now the shit that he's saying, it looks like he's lying and he's going back at it. That's, that's my point. You know, I got newspaper articles with Dave and I don't have to, because I know what I brought to the table with the source and millions of people know what I brought to the table with the source. So I'm not going to get into that. But I, you know, I, I keep it all the way 1,000. I can't call Dave my brother. Man. Wow. It's unfortunate. I never thought it happened. Um, it didn't come from me. I mean, we've had our differences, but, you know, he, he went his way and I went my way and I still was okay with that. You see, I still went on glad and gave him his props. Yes, you but, did. But, you know, just, just some recent shit that came up. You know, there was a Shade Room article that came up. And I had made a comment about, you know, I gave these guys my platform years ago and now they're super successful and I'm not doing as great as I used to. And they see me and they act like they don't even know me. And I was, I was, I, I put big checks and put them on source awards. And I mentioned a couple of names and I, I mentioned Khaled and Kevin Hart. I don't want them guys to think that there's any beef or anything because there's a lot more names than them. Those are the names that just came up because I go back with Khaled and I, you know, I don't know Kevin Hart personally, but both of these guys was on the Source Awards and they wanted to be in the magazine. I had a big part to do with that. And when I see them, they, you know, one thing about this industry is that the way it's supposed to be is like when you look out for somebody later on, they, they look out for you, not in money, but just an opportunity and position because that's how this game works. But, you know, it don't, it don't, it's, it's not like that. You know, a lot of these guys, you know, they're just, they're just selfish and they pick and choose, you know. If, if somebody's looking dirty at the time, they don't deal with it. But when we was both dirty, it was different. Or when I was clean in your eyes and you was dirty, it was different. But you know, that's just how it is. That to me is, is, is how you tell the real from the fake. It's how you tell somebody that came from the hood but changed his ways just to fit in to a different society. You don't give a fuck about them anyway. It's just about what, what, how much money and monetary gain and financial value they are at the time. Very, they're very replaceable in their community. 
you know. But um, yeah, the, the the shade room picked it up. A lot of people kind of agreed with me, and you could see thousands, and thousands. Of I mean, it was man, it was touching because everybody was really giving me my props. It was agreeing. Mm -hmm. And then Dave, Dave makes a fake page and say he didn't even, and was like going against me. And I knew it was Dave. But how how, how do you know it was him? Like like you, you got you, you my Dave. DM out because he got my D. I got the DMs, and I won't expose them maybe until the right time. Yeah, but he made a fake page, went on there, started talking a lot of bullshit. He used the cover of the Hip Hop Pioneers, which was my idea, as the page cover. And, you know, I knew it was him. I knew it. And, uh, yeah, like, he, he he didn't like that I was, people were, you know, giving me my props. Because, again, now that he's doing shit on his own, he has Dave made media, and blah, 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 blah. You know, he, it's, a, it's a whole different situation. I've seen the thing with Funny Marco, was doing shit with him, breakbeat medium, and then all of a, you know, funny Marco. I got DMs from him saying that Dave fucked him over, wasn't paying him. I don't know if they're back together, but you know, Dave's Dave's in my DM throwing up, you know, the signs and everything. You know, it was funny to you me know, seeing it was funny to me seeing signs like this in a white hand. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> it was crazy. You know, like the like something's the matter with Dave right now. You know, what I'm saying it's something. You know, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I know since me and him went, you know, he started hopping on the, the Benzino hate bandwagon, I guess. To, so if people thought that, then it would clear and free him. Of, I don't know. I don't understand it. It's, it. It was unfortunate. It hurt me. For sure, it hurt me. I'm hurt by it. You know, but I, you know, you know me. I'm not going to allow anybody, friend, family, anybody, to destroy my legacy out here. I've worked too hard for it. I went through too much for it. Say what you want about me, but my my resume speaks loud. And I'm I'm not gonna allow somebody for their own reasons. Somebody who's my brother for all the years and all the things that we went through, bad and good, and all the great things we accomplished would now come out after I've had his back for all the years, protected him. A lot of things creatively were my ideas that shined in the magazine. And for him to try to like take that back is just, it's you know, again, 2023 shit. That's best. Oh, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you something, and I'm talking strictly as a hip hop fan, um, somebody who lived the culture my entire life, coming from the South Bronx. Yo, this is so heartbreaking to hear, my brother. Um, you know, because it's crazy. Because I sat with I wasn't you. Wasn't gonna bring it up. I wasn't gonna bring it up, and it's ill that your last question touched on this. I was like, damn, we're gonna get through this without even. But yeah, you know, you know, Pres. I love you, man. I got to keep it 100. And I believe that keeping it 100 and us having these conversation is better for the culture. I believe our chemistry and what we bring to the table and how we do this is, is what the people need. I also made a comment about podcasters. I felt a lot of these podcasters, all of a sudden, they sit behind a chair and now they think they're God's gift to the fucking earth. And it's like, bro, calm down and relax. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're not doing nothing to advance the culture and help these kids with what we do and how we talk, then we're doing a disservice to the culture. True. And I don't want to do a disservice to the culture. I've done too many great things. I've lived it. You mentioned the South Bronx. My grandfather was there. I was 11 years old, spinning on two belt-driven turntables. The SB 1200s wasn't even uh, designed yet. And those who know, know. And, you know, it, <laughs> Hip hop is me, is a part of me. And those years, the source was probably the most proudest years of my life. And now for the man that, uh, that I accomplished those things with is coming against me. When you watch all these other people come against me, it just, you know, it hurts, bro. I can't lie. Yo, let me ask you something, right? Because, because again, as a fan of this thing, just a pure fan of it, not to mention friends of you both. Do you know what it would be, even if it's just for one night, like like for y'all to come together and d d during the 50th years of hip hop and, and what the source meant to it and have a dinner, have, have, have a gathering, have something with you two brothers. I mean, do you know how big that would be? Like, like, have y'all not, and I would love to be the conduit, 
because I hate to even hear this. I didn't even know behind the scenes this was going on. Real talk. Um, I, you know, Prez, you know, the situation like, you know, with my daughter, Dave, I, it, you know, it, it's hard not to, um, let it affect me mentally and uh, and blacken my heart. It's it, it, I fight for it not to go there because then it, I'll never come back. So I internalized it and it tears me apart emotionally because of the love I have for both of them. And I bring them up because of how much great times and real times and my daughter's my blood. This was the closest thing to a brother than my brother. And I don't understand it. I, I, I don't get it. I know I'm not this monster. At least I hope. I am. And I just don't understand why this has happened. Because I can understand how great of me and my daughter would be. I understand how great of right now me and Dave on the same page would be. So I got to, you know, I, I continue to look in the mirror and I still see a good guy. So I, um, I don't get it, you know, but, you know, I, I can't buckle and I can't break. I got to continue to do me and just continue to do what I think is right and what I know I am and not let the outside, uh, I don't want to call it outside, not let the situation of what they're saying and how it gets enhanced on the internet to go against me, affect me. Because I won't be good to, to myself. I got a seven year old, me and my girl, she has a 12 year old and I got to be here for them. And I got an 18 year old, Koi, and I, Koi's my, you know, I got to be here still for my kids, man. And, um, I can't let that break me, man. I never knew Dave was going to act like this. I never knew Koi was going to act like that. And, uh, you know, I don't like talking about it, but you know, it's the internet. So uh, I don't stand it. I, you know, me coming together with him. Um, I don't think he would do it at this point. I mean, again, these DMs that me and him been going back and forth and just, I don't get it. It's like a new day because Dave know how I get down. And I don't know who's in his ear. Um, you know, I, I just want to say I love them both. I love Corey, I love Dave. I wish we could get past our differences. Um, but, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Things ain't gonna go in life the way you think they're gonna go. So you just have to take what's on your plate and deal with it at that time and move on. And emotionally and mentally is where you have to refocus and make your mind up to just not worry about it, not think about it, and just keep doing you. You know, um, yeah, I, I just, I know that, and I, I want to say it again, me and my daughter on the same page would be one of the most amazing things out there. The daughter, yeah. father, you know, and me and Dave, as much as we went through, to be back on the same page would be amazing right now. But, you know, it's, it's not like it's me going against them. It's not like it's me attacking them. It's, it's me kind of defending myself. And, um, I'm not perfect. I'm sure I've made mistakes. I'm sure I've done things that they've disagreed with, but just as they've done things that I've disagreed with, it's okay. I still don't come here and throw shots at anybody first. The shots get thrown at me. And I think because they are close to me, they figure, well, they, they, they have the right to throw shots at me. Meaning, not in a bad way, but listen, hey, I'm, if anybody could say this to you, I could say this to you. But it doesn't come across as that. And 
I just find myself having to always defend myself. And then with all the other controversies that surround me, you know, it just becomes too much, man. you know? And um, I'm a cancer, so sometimes I go on my shell and shut down, but I'm always out here trying, you know, I got bills to pay, I have things to do. So I'm out here in these streets and I'm out here in these hoods. I'm out here doing my thing, you know, hosting these events. But you know, my restaurant's opening up. Um, I'm start doing my sit, you know, my, my, you know, I keep the podcast thing going in my restaurant. And, you know what I'm saying? I get to tell my side of the story, the source of my life. Um, I got a situation with that that I told you about that's still in the works. And, you know, like I said, every, you know, I'm letting everybody tell the stories. And when, 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 when it's my time, I tell mine. And, um, you know, it's just unfortunate, man. And yeah, 50 years hip hop, me and they would be good, but I don't think that's gonna. Well, I pray it do, brother. Um, I, I, I think it would be a travesty. Um, it would be a disservice to the culture, for the source, for you too. Um, you know, and I know, I know there were other partners in the mix, but for, the industry knew you too. Um, you were the part of just being there. waving that flag. It was just us two after like '94, because everybody bought, everybody, everybody else got bought out, and it was just us two after that. It was no there more. There you public. have it. There, there you have it. And it's crazy to think that um, it's a possibility that we're gonna go through this year in particular, and you two guys will not be able to to well, do something to celebrate. I mean, Chris, I mean, let's face it. Even if we was on the same page, me and Dave don't get the props anyways. We're still like the outsiders. Still, people don't want to, you know, acknowledge that what we did. Those 18 years that we was had the source was integral in the advancement of hip hop. Financially, Very much so. financially, culturally, and 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 listen, I take that problem. I can say that. So, sure, there, there, I've made some mistakes, but I'm a kid from Four Corners. I didn't know everything, but I've made some great moves that I, that I can be proud of. That that my kids can be proud of. Well, whatever kids that think that they can be proud. of. You know, I got four of them. It's not just Corey. It's my oldest son. It's Ray Ray. There's Taj and there's Zena. And now, like I said, my girl's son, Samaj. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I would hope that my legacy. I'm going to make sure that my legacy is going to is always going to hit them in a positive note, and they're going to know the great things I've done, not all this bullshit that people continuously want to, you know, put a narrative out there just to like, you know make me look bad, you know? Cause see, I've never done that. You know what I'm saying? I've never done, on the contrary, I've always had a belief in situations and even the Eminem situation, people think I just came out and tried, nah, man, I just had a belief of where hip hop was going and how hip hop was going in, in the machine and it just wasn't about Marshall. It was way deeper than that. But I just don't come out and just shit on people and, you know, bring people down. I've helped more people with the platform more guys from the street. My involvement with the source really meant it to where the streets was being heard. Because if not, it would have been like just, you know, a bunch of college kids who really didn't have too much relations to the streets. And that was, I think, the essence of the source was my involvement in Dave wholeheartedly accepting somebody like me that didn't graduate from college, that barely graduated from high school, but loved hip hop and knew his way around, had a certain way about him and then was hip hop. He had somebody who was hip -hop right by him 24 hours a day. And we would come in, I, I wasn't an office guy, so I didn't need an office, but our synergy is what was in the pages. Make no mistake about it, you know, we ran shit, we made the decisions, I made the decisions up there. So him saying the shit he's saying just doesn't make any sense. It's just coming from anger. Maybe it's coming from the new girl he's with. You can do it by yourself, Dave, you don't need him. Everybody hates him. He's hated, he's, and he thinks that, he, you know, and, and, and he said, well, you know what, that's a strategy. Maybe if I come back and maybe if I get on that bandwagon, then I'll be accepted, not knowing that we was accepted by the streets. The few people that you thought were running this 
We don't give a fuck about them. We're still those niggas. And I just, I, I think he just mis miscalculated his strategy of trying to get away from me. You know, because we lost everything. I lost everything. But Dave comes from a Jewish family. So, you know, he, he went to Harvard. You know, so I came from Harvard Street in Four Corners. You know what I mean? So it was a difference. He was straight for life. You know, I still got to scrape and scrounge for mine. That's okay. I'm not crying about it. I'm not a victim. I came from the streets anyways. I represent the streets. So when I go in these communities, I'm loved, man. I'm bombed by my people. When you stop believing what's on the internet, then that's a mistake because that's not the masses. You think it is, but that's the, that's the internet. One big perception machine that if you let it become your reality, you're going to miscalculate life. And you're going to miscalculate what's real out here. And that's what I think he's done. Because regardless of our differences, our, our resume and our content we, we have, and together it's undeniable. Still undeniable. He can still do his thing and I can still my thing. But don't try to take away what I've done, especially when you've given me my props um, uh, in magazines and coming doing interviews, but then you're making fake pages, you're mad because the shade room and the people are saying that, they're not mentioning it. People know you, Dave, but they know us. So if they're saying Benzino, they're saying Dave. They're saying Dave, they're saying Benzino. We was one and he didn't know that. But you gotta take the good with the bad. There was some bad decisions made. There was some bad things that happened. All right, shit, I got indicted by the feds. He didn't. We stuck together and we, and we got through everything. So, you know, I, you know, hey, listen, man, again, this was the part of the interview that I thought I was gonna be able to skip it. I didn't I even realize I, I, I was gonna step on this landmine, real talk, <laughs> I was doing it. <laughs> Because I couldn't take you up out of here without. I mean, it it, it would be it would be a, a, a disservice to you. Uh, I appreciate you. Not to mention this part of your legacy. Impossible. I I didn't know we was about to go here. Um, but yo, I pray you. And, and like I said, I don't mind being a conduit because I think the culture needed. I do. Um, and here's another thing: we all getting older. Like life ain't promised to us. We lost gangsta boo. Oh what, man, one of this year, man. Like, that's January first. Last, last time I seen gangsta boo, so I think what it could have been the source of was. I mean, I, see, you know, just a great, see, see great human being, man. Great spirit, man. I mean, real as they Tomorrow's not promised to us, um, Ray. It's, it's not promised to us, and all this BS, it ain't even worth it, fam. So, we we got to do it for the culture. Real talk. You know, me, I don't hold grudges, man, but it gotta be right and it has to be sincere. And I just can't be, a, you know, I can't, my personality can't be attacked on one end and then, you know, it just it just can't because attack me on something that I can agree with you that I can apologize to. You. But if, if I don't see the shit that you're saying is making sense, then you're just hopping on the, the hate me bandwagon thinking that it's gonna somehow bring you Cause that's how I felt about the whole, you know, situation with Corey. And I don't want to, you know, bring that up to talk about that, but I just felt like that there was an aura about me that was on the internet that I think that maybe both of them felt, hey, look, shit, you know, I'm gonna be on that band because that that because that because that's everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, it's it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Like I'm super loved out here. It gets to the point now that Wherever I'm at, gas station, airport, streets, in the car, I mean, in the bathroom, it don't matter. Benzino, 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 I mean, and it feels good, man. I can't lie. Being loved feels good. Being acknowledged feels good. Shit, where I came from. So, you know, while there, again, I caught a bandwagon because, like, I love them, so I don't see how I don't see where the hate of almost to the point that where enemies come from. You know, I can only think that it's a strategy to help further themselves because they think that the internet, that the world hates me based on a few of the people on the internet. So, you know, and I don't have an Instagram right now, which is pretty cool, you know? 
I kind of like, I like being off the grid. You still don't have your Instagram? I don't really, you know, so nah, like there's no Did need you miss for it. it? Nah. I mean, I used to get money from it. Of course, you, you know, I miss that side of it, but um, <laughs> yeah, come on, you know, but as far, you know, I'm, you know, I don't like that people can attack me, disrespect me. I got 17,000 pictures up there since 2012 of my kids and everything, all my kids, all these memories and all my pictures are wiped. I can't get my pictures back. I can't even get my pictures back. And the reason was because I violated the terms of the community, but there's people coming on my page attacking me daily, calling me the most worst shit. Then I go with them, then they report me, 15 reports, they wipe me. Like, what? Well, Yo, you know what's crazy? Not- what's crazy is they gave Trump back his Facebook and Instagram. You, they, you ain't get yours back yet? No. Wow. Oh, a million and a half people. But, you know, listen, I don't, I was here before Instagram. You know what I'm saying? People know me. People know me. I have a body of work that is known, that stands on its own. If Zuckerman and his guys don't want me in the community, then I don't have to be in their community. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I got my own community out here that love the shit out of me, that I don't get attacked by. See, his community was attacking me. See, they got all the data, they can go see it. I've never went on somebody else's page and just hurled racial slurs to them and disrespected them. They always come to me, I answer back, and then they report, and then I get, you know what I mean? Not fair at all. So that's why I'm like, you know what, if that's the case, then hey, I don't need to be on this one. I'm still on Twitter. You know, I, I like how Elon Musk be him a speech. You know, he doesn't go with that shit. You know what I'm saying? I like the way he's doing it. We'll see if it changes. But my Twitter is still, is still very healthy. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? So, but the Instagram, I'm just disappointed the way they handled my situation. I should have got my page back. Well, like I said, if Trump got his back, ain't no <laughs> way. Like, it's crazy to think that you ain't get Is he running back. press? Is he still running press? Oh, yeah. He's out on the campaign trail right now. What you think? Oh yeah. Who's gonna win? I don't know. I mean, chance? um, you think he got a chance know, to win it again? I think he do. I th- I, like real talk. It, it's him or the Florida governor, um, DeSantis. I don't feel that's, him. That's gonna get that him. nominee. But see, De- DeSantis, he's younger. He's smarter. He comes across, he's well spoken, but he has. I don't the know same if he's smarter than Trump. I don't know if he's smarter. Trump, I don't think people give Trump his credit with credit due as far as Trump's a pretty smart he is. People don't realize Trump has been relevant for years. If we're going to talk about Madonna, you know what I'm saying? Then we got to talk about Donald Trump being relevant for years. And just in the worldly culture, in the United States culture, we're not talking black culture, but if you're black, you knew Donald Trump back then. Yeah. Because yeah. he was one of the first millionaire guys in Playboy and with the bad chicks and he owned the, 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 uh, the so, I mean, Trump, now I'm not saying I'm voting for the guy, but if I had to choose between him and DeSantis, then he, he would get my vote. I mean, the hood ate when Trump was in office, man. <laughs> Honestly. And, 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 you know, Trump pardons a lot. He pardoned a lot of people that I don't think these other guys would have pardoned. That's you know true. What I'm saying? I, I, you know, you know, I do know his followers. It's almost the same thing like Eminem. It's like their followers are just so radical. You know what I'm saying? It makes you not like them because of their followers. You know, but he's done some good that you can't deny. And he's done, you know what I'm saying? He's done some bad. He's human. Um, again, I, I'm not wearing any Make America Great hats again, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, when, from that perspective, um, the hood ate when Trump was in office. So I don't know about this guy DeSantis. I know, you know, people in Florida, there's still a, a big disparity between white and black people down there as far as opportunity. So I judge it like that. So we'll see what happens, man. You know. Um, yeah, I, I mean, so you, you you like DeSantis, huh? No, no, no. I'm just saying, to answer your um, earlier question, you said does Trump still have a, a chance? So absolutely, yeah. he does. Okay. 
And he has a he has a chance for all the reasons you just said. But if he gonna get the ticket, if he gonna get that that um become the nominee on 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 the right, you know, DeSantis is another one that has an equal chance. Um, and Trump is out here and he started early. A lot of people criticized him for starting early, but it was smart. He know I'm under indictment. I got all kind of damage that has been done to me over the last two and a half years. I got to start early, get an early jump on this thing. But either which way, long story short, he does have a chance. For uh, sure. well, it's going to be interesting, man. You know what I mean? I mean, um, there's no black nominations, huh? You, this, not now. Go. Not now. No, you, you like, like I said, Trump jumped out there and announced his... Um, his not, he, he announced the fact that he would be running so early. He kind of the only one out here. Like, so well, he got a head start on everybody. Is Kanye running? <laughs> I hope not. Would you vote for him? I think Kanye, I think Kanye, he need to take the, 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 the money he got left and protect it at all costs. He, he, can't afford, he can't afford to put his foot in his mouth no more and lose some more money. I think, I think that's a good way to... Uh... To end this, another classic. <laughs> I, think a, I think I think that's a good way to close it because that's a message right there. Trust me, that's a jewel. You just dropped a gem right there, Prezo. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yo, Ray. Real talk, like it's always my pleasure, brother. I love hearing your perspective. You dropped a lot of gems in this interview, uh, and I just can't wait to do it again, man. You, Come on, you man. Know, yeah. Let's keep it going. You know how we do. Keep it going, my brother. Great, great interview, Prez. Great job again, and. I look forward to seeing it. My brother, one love. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move.